It's time for Twig This Week in Google. Stacey Higginbotham, Aunt Pruitt, Jeff Jarvis, the whole gang is here. We'll talk about Google's flock. They're replacing it, but is the replacement any better? The IRS wants to use ID.me for your face scans. Is that a good idea? And why is Amazon getting behind the legalization of marijuana? It's all coming up next on Twig. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twig. This Week in Google, episode 648, recorded Wednesday, January 26th, 2022. Band saws and butt joints. This Week in Google is brought to you by Wealthfront. To start building your wealth and get your first $5,000 managed for free for life, go to wealthfront.com slash twig. And by Imperfect Foods. Imperfect Foods is catching the food that's falling through the cracks of our food system by sourcing quirky yet delicious foods. Right now, Imperfect Foods is offering our listeners 20% off your first four orders when you go to imperfectfoods.com and use the promo code TWIG. And by Compiler, an original podcast from Red Hat discussing tech topics big, small, and strange listen to compiler on apple podcasts or anywhere you listen to podcasts it's time for twig this week in google the show where we cover the latest from uh, the world around us how about that that's really what we're doing taking a look at the world around us with waldorf and sattler here's my sattler ladies and gentlemen mr jeff jarvis hello jeff hello is that the grumpy one that's the I think they're both grumpy. Both grumpy. Oh, okay. grumpy. Well, then I'm fine. Then that's me, yeah. <laughs> the Leonard Tao Professor for Journalistic Innovation at the... Greg, 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 Greg. Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York. Looking good I today, I wonder Jeff. what my, my family thinks outside the door there. Um, they hear you making that racket. What is racket. now? Yeah. <laughs> He's Jeez, not on with the people BBC, watch is this? <laughs> <laughs> also here, Aunt Pruitt. Pruitt Grutt from Hands-On Photography. He's the community manager at our wonderful Discord. And you, got, you did a bunch of stuff this week. Yeah, I've been a little busy. Uh, we got an event coming up with Miss Georgia Dow. It's going to be a lot of fun. That'll be fun, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, we got Mike Elgin coming up in a couple of weeks, and oh, it's going to be good. It's gonna oh, be the good. Discord's back up. The dis yeah, oh, Discord was down today. The API was broken. Yep. But I think it's How back. How does that up. happen when it's distributed? It's not How distributed. That That's the illusion that you have. Oh, I see. Everybody has a server, but they all run on Discord. <laughs> Discord's right. own hardware, so it's really... It's oh, just, I never understood that. Yeah, oh. I never understood it either until I got one, and then I realized, well, it's just, you know, it's all running on their hardware. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Got it. So it's right. like any you other. Have your it's own just instance. like Twitter. Yeah, but it's just like Twitter, really. Anything else, right? Um, you just can have a closed little club, which is great. Also with us, she's back. Stacy. Well, she wasn't gone last week, but she is. I was about to say, I was here yesterday yeah. or last week. <laughs> last week. Host of Stacy's Book Club, Stacy Higginbotham from Stacy on IoT.com and the IoT podcast with Kevin Toffel. Hello, Stacy. Hello, y'all. Half of your eyes look <laughs> one way, half the eyes look the other. Her husband oh, really? did, did, did her right eye today. <laughs> <laughs> In a beautiful moment of togetherness. That's really sweet. Was, I should get Lisa to do my eye true. makeup sometime. I think that's a nice idea. Do you do eye makeup? No, of course not. I did used to <laughs> for years. I was going to say, you do TV, right? yeah. I have I mean, my own makeup yeah. kit with, I know what my shades are and all that and my contour and fill. And ugh, the minute we'd started doing these podcasts, in video, I said, I am never, I'm not wearing makeup. Sorry. I did my eye makeup today, too. You <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> yeah. Did you paint on those Lovely. eyebrows? I think you did. No. I think you painted them That's on. just focus peeking. You just <laughs> <laughs> Were you around, Leo, when, when HGTV came in and they started doing the air yeah. brush thing? I was oh, uh, doing live with Regis and Kelly, and... Um, the makeup artist, you go there and you get made up before the show. The makeup artist said, we're, uh, we're, we're using uh, airbrushes today. And she painted my face with yeah. an airbrush. Because mm. so, if you just use regular foundation and powder, you can see it. There's enough detail. You can see the powder. Yep. So they on the painted HG, it. And HD. Yeah, and HD. They paint, yeah. And apparently, uh, 
Kelly had brought that on. She had a TV show. I can't remember the name of it, but she had a, a primetime TV show, and they were using it there, so they wanted to try it on. They didn't stick with it. It was back to the old. No, no, I haven't seen it in a long yeah, time. Yeah, you don't need that. I had my makeup done for Fox TV once, and oh my. Did they paint you right? I looked. They did, but they, I walked out looking almost the same as I normally do, but a little better. Yeah. Um, That's what you want when they you took die. like 45 minutes. I, I still don't understand oh, what God, all I they know. were doing with my face. Oh, we used yeah. to have hair and makeup we're tech pampered. TV. It would, it would literally take you 45 minutes. You'd have to come an hour mm -hmm. early to get hair done and makeup done. And then they, and, and then, and they do your nails. They do the whole thing. Nails? Nails. Well, we were showing, well, yeah, showing products. Oh, I see. Yeah. You're a hand model, George. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Was George? No, it was Kramer. Kramer was a hand model. And, and I, yeah, Kramer used to lotion his hand. So I got good at going, you know, rub, you, you rub the outline. If I were showing this phone, you would, you, because you don't want to just go, look, there's the phone. Mm -hmm. You go like this. <laughs> That's right. Vanna. It's, it's, it's your Vanna. It's like the price is right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you're just slowly you, stroking it. <laughs> you folks have no idea how many times Queen Pruitt gave me crap for bad doing, fingernails. Yeah, if, if yeah. I did a product demo and you know we do the B-roll of me showing the product, then my I didn't oh, yeah. have the manicure done. Okay, you want you know, a tip? She let me know. You want a tip? <laughs> I'll give you a tip. Everybody, this is going to be your tip of the week. Mm -hmm. Um, because we, I, for a while with tech TV, I would go and I would get my nails done and I went to a place, it was 20 bucks and eventually they stopped. They said, you're paying too much. You need, <laughs> you need to go to the $5 <laughs> nail. Pl I said, I'm not going to the $5 nail salon. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, funguses and stuff. I, well, I just, you know, I said really 20 bucks a week. You're not anyway. I stopped, uh, but I did it my. And I asked, and they said, "Look, all you need to do the, the manicure said get a good nail brush every every day in the when you shower or whatever you use the nail brush, scrub, 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 and then you put a nice little cuticle oil on your cuticle cuticles, oil. Yep. and you're good. And you know you can mm -hmm. cut obviously, but you're good. That that means your nails will look good enough that you can do the hand modeling. You don't have, have you maintained to... this toilet? Since I, then? I I still do this. Yes, every morning. Oh my, I, yeah." I get lax on it, and she lets me know because we have all of that stuff here with that being her profession. Oh, that's her she job. Does, she does manicures. <laughs> that's yeah. her job. I remember When I first met her, she was like, she looked first at my nails and commented on that before anything. <laughs> yeah, still uh -oh. does. I was grateful oh. I had just had them done. <laughs> I'm going to have uh, my hands done my in my nails. pockets. She's done my nails, actually. I went When she was at the <laughs> manicure shop down here, I went down and got my nails done. Now, who would think? Who would think this would be our topic? The lead we'll story the today. Yeah. I don't know how we got here. Our lead, you know what our lead story should be? Goodbye, Flock. Flock oh you. We uh, never got to say hello to Flock. Yeah, Google says, and I think this, this is really an interesting story. Said yesterday, they were going to replace, as you remember, they had announced no more third-party cookies. Everybody hates them. Good, that's fine. But we do need some way to sell uh, targeted advertising. So we're going to have the Federated Learning of Cohorts which was a kind of retronym, awkward retronym, because everything in this area had birds, bird themed. So this flock would essentially watch what you do, what you just the same way as Google always did. But instead of having a unique identifier for you, they would put you in a cohort of people with similar interests. And we they never really explained how big this cohort would be. But the thing that I think upset people was then when when you go to a website, your flock cohort would be sent to the website. Like, at, at, you know, hi, here's Leo. He's 3994-7. And people didn't really like that. It wasn't clear how big the cohort would be. Uh, I think there's also, it's funny because they're in trouble with the EU. Axel <laughs> Springer, our favorite uh, yes, heavy, yes. has sued them for ending cookies yeah yeah there, springer is the one who led the fight against google used their political clout got the eu to go after google everybody's screaming privacy privacy dot and shuts dot and shuts get rid of cookies they are evil and then and then after springer says uh oh we can't target any ads no don't get rid of cookies that's it's very bad. confusing the eff oh. did not like flock because there was this concern that uh as always with these things that are so-called anonymized it's possible to de-anonymize. And they were a little worried that if people started to combine your flock ID with other profile information, they might actually be able to figure out who's who and all of that. So Google has, 
I think in response to the EU, I don't know, I don't know really, in response to privacy advocates. Um, yeah, I think there was a lot of reasons because a lot of people were unhappy with Flock. And, yeah. So and they're coming up with? Topics. Oh. Topics. It was just a proposal. I mean, they never implemented it. It was only yeah. in beta. Right. So now it's Topics. Topics. Which is topics. Are. Topics. So Ben Galbraith, who's direct senior director for product, acknowledged privacy concerns with Flock, said topics was easier for users to understand. It would also make it easier for Google to remove sensitive topics from being uh, targeted. So then, so topics um, lets advertisers target online users based on a topic they might be interested in, uh, fitness or travel. Chrome does this automatically. Now, it, it's not, by the way, this is all proposal, not implemented yet. Chrome will generate five topics based on your browser history with, and this is important, participating websites. It then mm. sends three topics, one from each of the past three weeks, to participating sites to share with their advertising partners. Topics like Flock are not permanent. In this case, they're stored for three weeks, then deleted. There are 350 topics. But, but Google's saying by doing this, instead of saying what your interests are in Flock, we're saying what your interests are, but we can also just ignore things like, um, I don't know, whatever, you know, mental health issues. My searches for guns. mental health resources. Yeah, guns, and that kind of thing. So topic data is stored on your device. Manicures. Manicures. Yeah, they. I, well, that, that this will be a good test. Not if sensitive. I, if I get a bunch of manicure information in my Instagram feed, I think we'll know. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's never stored on Google, unlike third-party tracking cookies, which allow people, companies to use tracking pixels, so they can go cross-site. This can't really go cross-site. Uh, you will be unlike Flock. You'll be able to see what topics you are being. To, you know, flogged w with they're being sent to sites. If you don't like a topic, I think I like this. You this can is, remove this it. This is great. Yeah, yeah. You can say, you know, what? I'm not interested in tennis rackets. I am interested I look in pickleball. Once for rackets. my for my wife, and I don't play tennis rackets. Yeah, I'm too old. I play pickleball, and and yeah. Uh, and Google says users will be able to disable the feature completely, which is really interesting. I think Google huh. does. Google wants to maintain its ad model, but they really do want to respond to people's privacy concerns. Yeah, it's a way to this add. It's a, it's a value add. Device. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Ant. I think so. You said this is stored on the device, and yeah. Chrome is just reading it yes. that way. Well, Chrome generates it and then stores it in its, you know, store. Okay. It stores it in pocket. wherever it stores cookies. It's back pocket. It's yes. back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> it's back pocket. So, but it's stored locally on your device. It's not sent up to the cloud like associated okay. with your IP address, correct? So they announced, yeah, that's right. It, that's the key, right? It's anonymized. Yeah. Um, and although they it also is in said, a way associated with your IP address because when you go, let's say you go to um, uh, what's the, you know, some bass fishing place. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And and it sends out. Let's you know you go to Dick's Sporting Goods uh, website, and it's it's going to say, well, here's the three things, here's the three topics Leo's interested in. Um, but but Dick's is getting that plus my IP address, so that's why they oh, have to expire right. them on a regular basis, right? So they can't start building a picture of you. The other interesting thing here and is what could be that... done. Go ahead, Stacey. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, Google says they also are going to send fake topics to about 5% of the websites to make sure <laughs> the topic generation is actually random, which I thought was kind of like, mm. does that mean like 5% of your ads aren't, are they going to give people a discount of 5%? Like that, Oh, from I, the I get where they're coming from, but it, it's kind of weird. I have, yeah. I, I mean, I'm a little, I'm a, of course, um, I've, I've been a little skeptical because Google has its own way of tracking who you are and. And all of that, but I think that Google is really is. I'm going to give them credit for trying to find a system that users can tolerate that gives the advertisers yeah. some of the information, yeah. uh, which might actually give you more relevant advertising. Here, yeah. Here's a question: Do you did, did you receive anything whether whether an advertiser can do a not? That's how it got abused on Facebook, right? If 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 I if I decide I want to advertise this thing, but not to people who like hip hop as a way, you know, this job. As a way to yeah, not have kind of redlining, in other words, that kind of stuff, yeah. right? 
Um, and, and the not was an issue uh, there, which I think was the primary one. I don't think that Google um, can control the not because they're going to send. Here's a here's on the Google it's keyword such a blog. Small sample. They're going to okay. send out. You know this. You know Jeff's interest in autos and vehicles, books and literature, comics and animation, rock music, team sports. There's no reason All that Dick Sports couldn't say, "Oh, rock. I don't want anybody's interest in rock," and just say, "You know, we won't advertise to that person." The point that Google's making on this diagram is you don't know. You can't tell what's in that cookie. It's, a, you know, it's code. But you can see very clearly, because Chrome will show this, what your what interest is sending to the advertisers. And you see that X, you can delete them. So I think this is, I, I like this uh, solution. Let me, here's Google's one-minute video to describe Ooh. this here. Um, are you getting uh, audio... Uh, you didn't test your audio, Leo. Mm. Left, left, right, right. Mm. Left, 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 right, right. Yeah, so maybe there's no audio in it. We, we heard the TikTok. Oh, okay. Hmm. Introducing topics. Thank privacy you. Sandbox's newest proposal to help you preserve your privacy online while enabling sites to show. I'm not fast With topics, your browser will note topics related to participating sites you visit. Let me do this. I'm a trained slow. professional. For example, if you've recently <laughs> visited sites about sports, the browser may note that sports is one of your topics. Well, your cheating. topics you easy will help determine the ads you see. And a site won't need to know who you are to show you an ad about sports. They just know you like it. You have no control. Oh, sorry. You do have control over your topics. And you can remove topics in huh. the browser. <laughs> or you can turn them off altogether. I'm cold reading it, man. <laughs> With topics that specific sites you visited are no longer shared across the web, like they might have been with third-party cookies. Third-party evil cookies. We're testing topics soon to get feedback from the industry so that it works together with all of the other privacy sandbox proposals to protect your privacy and keep the internet a valuable source of free information for now and the future. And that's the balancing act. They want to support advertising, is. which is what supports free internet content, but they also want you to feel comfortable with the information they share. I don't know. Negatives? Stacy, can you see a negative here? Um, no. I mean, I think it's mostly positive, especially if they make it easy for you to look, because then you can also, I mean, the negative for an advertiser is I could go in and I could be like, Ugh, I'm so sick of seeing all these high priced coats because I keep buying them. So then I'm like, I am not interested in high fashion. And then I would stop buying high fashion because yeah. of advertising. Google that's has, really has, not a has problem published, uh, interestingly, on GitHub um, the uh, details about the API. If you wanted to, if you want to start getting ready as a as a web uh, site designer to to support this, um, yeah, I think it's. Um, I, I think there's a further like opportunity it. is to let me pick my topics. Oh, isn't that interesting? Tell you, I yeah. want the car. Yeah. But you might. I mean, I will say that as I. So especially because it's short range, like three weeks, let's just go with every time I binge watch a show, I start Googling like mad to hear like, right. who's the actors? Where have I seen this person? Yep. Right? Me too. So yep. it captures, it captures that, which is a very fleeting interest, but might be interesting for an advertiser. Oh. Um, and then it goes away when I'm probably no longer interested in it. If I had to manage that, I'd just be like, oh, I'm interested in IOT and close. But the interesting thing, too, here That's, is Google's always, always sussed out topicality, right, from the very, very beginning of advertising. So how are they going to know an expensive coat site? I guess that's pretty obvious. They're coats and they're expensive. But, how, you know, what, how does the topicality uh, determined is going to be interesting to see? Because we've never had transparency on that before. Why this exactly. ad appeared on this page? It would almost if make you it, are, it almost makes it look like they have uh, access to the history, even though they say they're not looking at your history. Of which the user or the site, and the user. But they Ooh. they are very obviously looking at your history. I mean, if I look at like my Google News feed, for example, mm -hmm. I mean, all I have to do is search like one freaking. I don't know, like hot tub chemicals, and for the rest of my yeah. life, I'm reading stories about hot tubs. So I yeah, assume. Yeah, that is annoying. This, it's going to be built on, I mean, that's easy for Google, right? Yeah. It, yeah. It may not be accurate. So I can go in and be like, please stop showing me ads for hot tubs. I mean, <laughs> Google, look, Google's not going to make privacy advocates and advertisers happy. So it's a, it's like any compromise. There's, it's mm -hmm. not going to be perfect. As a, I, I think as a user, I'm satisfied with this. 
Will advertisers feel like they're getting enough information? I mean, honestly, if if you're Dick's Sporting Goods and it says you're interested, I don't know, pickleball is probably too granular. That's the problem. So it might say you're interested in racket sports. Then they, I mean, maybe they'd like more granularity. Uh, I don't know. I well, haven't heard from advertisers. I don't know. Hmm. The other interesting piece here is is the correlations that occur. I remember early on, um, I'm forgetting the name of the company that was bought by AOL long ago. They found, for example, that um, service uh, people in, in people in the army and navy and so on uh, correlated very highly with big screen TVs. <clears throat> so you might be wanting to advertise a big screen TV, but you go toward military interest or vice versa, right? And and that's because you have your own data as an advertiser that says these are the, these are the useful correlations that we have. Yeah. But that's okay. I mean, that's been mm -hmm. happening for a while, so yeah, I don't have issues with that. I mean, okay. I, I think I was, we've I was got like, to... But we're cool with that, right? <laughs> right, we, we, we are, but we got to think about, um, you know, how does this... Let's... let's here, here's the test, I think. If I'm a job site and I'm advertising jobs, am I using some topics to get rid of, oh, people who may be less desirable for my employers? People who are on a culture fit? Um, yeah, right? And, and, and so that's going to... Google's going to have to test out, and they're good at this, right? Going back to Matt Cutts, they're good at, at sussing out bad uses of things, but far better than Facebook ever was, um, of seeing how could this system get misused. And and it will be. It surely will be. No, no doubt about it. Okay. Anyway, I, I, topic. I, com I commend them for trying to find something that makes people happy. Uh, and I'm sure the, I haven't seen the EFF yet. Let me see if the EFF is already up in arms over this. <laughs> well, but also the, the Washington Post and the New York Times, I put in, the, in this tweet. It's the, rather than saying a new way to target ads, a new way to track you. Yeah. Yes. Well, but well, remember, I don't think that's a problem. I think it's important to explain to people that these companies are tracking them. <gasps> I have a really interesting tracking story that is not on the thing. But let me that, just say this. Talk about it. Uh, it and then let's do that. But it's not tracking. The common person's understanding. Yeah, it's not, it's right. not I tracking. I disagree with you on the, the New York Times headline scaring. Well, but, is, but well, is let it, Leo defend me. I'm going to defend you. Because <laughs> so third, <laughs> so cookies, as Google pointed out, track you in the sense that you, uh, the Facebook like button sees multiple sites that you've been on. This is a very different system where the Chrome browser, which sees those sites anyway, then extracts from that an interest, five interests, which you can see what they are, you can turn them off, and sends that to the website. That is not the same thing at all. That's not really no, tracking you, not. in my opinion. Now, maybe, do you think, Stacey, consumers will see that mechanism, that the browser then says, this is what Media you're interested in? Uh, is that will that be seen as tracking? I don't feel like that's tracking. It's not following you in any way. Anytime something pops up and tells the average person, "Hey, I think you like this," or "I know you like this," yeah. right, and they're correct, they don't like that, that creeps people out. Yeah, they don't care that it follows them other places. That's a real subtle mm -hmm. distinction most people don't care about. They should because that's the problem. That's yeah, why we. Are, I mean, that's why we don't like third party cookies. But how sophisticated does someone have to be to, so, okay, can I tell you my tracking story? Because I, I, I think this yeah, is interesting please. and it ties to this. So I read it, my daughter is a sophomore in high school. So she's looking, we're about to start the whole college thing. So we, we got a book by a Wall Street Journal reporter about like getting money for college. And in that book, he talked about how colleges are now using pixel trackers on emails to track when applicants open their emails, how quickly they respond, how many times they open it. And they well, use that information. I thought that was old news. Okay. But they use that information for getting a sense of how interested someone is in the school and for allocating scholarship money. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh crap, I gotta get my daughter Proton Mail because I don't want I don't want her casual searches or interests in something to cost us money, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I think it's old news that yes, there are pixel trackers in email, right? We might all be like, Yeah, 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 I know. But when you think about how those are being used, it's kind of like, holy crap. Yeah. Uh, in data. ways that might surprise you. 
It's well, and that's what I mean. Like people are not sophisticated or it's not even not sophisticated. We just don't think everything through to that level because my God, we'd have, we sound like paranoid, crazy folk, I guess. But anyway, that's, that's why I've been thinking. Yeah. I I think you got a point, Air quotes, Whatever. normals. We do sound paranoid when we start talking about privacy and security, even though it's pretty blatant what's going on. I think Google has an opportunity here, um, and this is me just speculating. <laughs> to, to to your point, Leo, about about the awareness of people, and to your point, Stacy and and Ant, about um, the, the 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 nervousness is to is to be very strong of saying control your advertising. Control what topics you have, control what topics you don't get. I've always argued, I wanted on, on the sites that I, that I ran when I ran them, I wanted the opportunity for somebody to say, don't show me this advertiser and sell that data to the advertiser. These people don't want to see you. You figure out why, but but that's valuable. You're wasting your money trying to get to these people. So stop going mm-hmm. to those people, right? Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I, I think there's an opportunity to become, uh, I hate using this word, very proactive uh, and, and allow uh, users to, in fact, not just feel in control, but be in control. It's going to generate yeah. more data that is actually valuable because it comes from, it's a permission system that says, yeah, I am looking for a car right now. No, I was looking for my daughter. She already bought the car. Stop with the car ads, please. Stop wasting your money and my eye space. There's a lot of opportunity there, I think. They won't do it. <laughs> well, and there's always people who are going to be like, not everybody wants to be proactive with advertisers. Many people no, might no. be like, oh, I'm going to tell it I want data well, about. That's kind mm-hmm. of my thought is that really the people who object to this. It's not about tracking. It's not about cookies. It's not about any of this. They object to advertising and and they just they don't want advertising that knows anything about them, which has never been, like- by the way, never been the case. Advertising is always targeted to some degree. If you buy better homes and gardens, you're targeting uh, the readers of Better Homes and Gardens, if you buy ads on this show, you're targeting them based on mm-hmm. their interest in this show. Uh, so mm-hmm. I think where people got upset is they just don't like advertising. <laughs> well, I think advertising has gotten more manipulative. So oh, it's the not more, more micro targeted. Think about the advertising. Oh, sorry, the, the, yeah. you know, in the in TV oh. ads where the, the the your coworker put a bottle of scope on your desk because they didn't want to tell you you had bad breath. I mean. It's been manipulative since oh, you know, sorry, four out of five doctors recommend bacon for breakfast. I mean, it's uh, it's always been manipulative. I think it's maybe less manipulative now. I mean, maybe what most news, more than half, sorry, Stacy. No, no, go ahead. But more than half the ads in newspapers in the early days before the linotype and, and and the explosion, more than half in major newspapers were for patent medicines. Advertising was crap. Yeah, from the beginning. Feeling tired? Oh, snake you need, oil. Yeah, you need snake oil. So yeah, I mean, I understand why people hate ads. That's probably part of the reason people hate ads. But ads, we even do ads. We, you know, marketing well, is I, important I, to businesses. We got it. They got somehow we yeah. have to get the word out, right? Yep. It's it's not the ads. Mm. So advertising, yes, is manipulative. But I think the fact that it's coming at you in so many plays places in ways might feel more manipulative. And I say that because, again, I'll just use my fancy coats as an example. I can watch the fancy coats on television, but when I'm watching them on the internet, they're chasing me over every freaking story there is, right? So my the ratio of time I spend looking at fancy coats is is pretty high and maybe that's what feels so many i don't know. i think i think well so really the debate is how sophisticated are people when they say i don't want to be tracked and i think you know the people who listen to this show are the privacy advocates who are into question. technology are really saying i don't want to i don't i don't want uh you know cookies tracking me from site to site. I don't want my location information to be available. I don't want you uh, putting uh, little sub pixels in my emails so that you know I've opened it. That kind of thing is the intrusive tracking people are talking about. And for mm-hmm. the, and I don't think this is, this is not that. They may still not like yeah, it, but this, this is, is not, this is much more benign. 
Will they do a good job of explaining this to the public, or will the public st well, and, and media will be media, again? This I go back to the, the narrative is going to come from the Washington Post, and the New York Times, saying they found a new way to track you. Yeah, evil Google. Yeah, and it's going to be real hard to say we're actually trying to improve advertising, and if we don't, media are borked, yeah. folks, borked. So what if what if we say a less intrusive way to tap? Uh, well, here's the headline in the Times. Google introduces a new system for tracking Chrome browser users. Washington and, Post is worse. And if you, well, but even if you just read the headline, that's, yeah, that that's doesn't sound so oh, good. Uh oh, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. yeah. And, and it blocks so called That's, cookies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, oh, why don't you put scare quotes around cookies? Okay. I will tell you, though, when I ask normal people every now and then, I'm like, hey, you know what a cookie is? They're like, oh, uh, yeah, it's that thing that, it's on the web. It it follows it keeps you. Keeps popping up on the screen. <laughs> here's it, the. Uh, that, I mean, th seriously. Yeah. No. So here's even, the. Um, here's the Washington Post. Google proposes a new way to track people around the web again. That's not even accurate. Oh wow. wow. Yeah. That's good old clickbait right there. Yeah. Yep. Uh, moral panic. Uh, and I gave you the warning. It was time for the moral panic. <laughs> and, you, and you fell apart. Jeez. He's producing the show, what Jeff. Come on, man. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not producing today. No, he he's not. The, he had plenty of time oh. to do it. He pushed the button. Never mind. I was trying to help you, Ant. There was a changing of the guard at the TriCaster, and they didn't catch oh. it. So, Ant, would you, <laughs> Ant, would you push the button again? And the, and the <laughs> folks who push the buttons on the other side of the room. Maybe they'll push the button at the same. There, there we, we go. go. I feel so good. Thank <laughs> you, Ann. There we go. Ann has prepared. You know, it's a bow a on the effect. top of the discussion. It does it need a sound effect because remember, most of the audience is not looking. They're only listening. Yeah. So, so what, they only know we have to work on that. What would be the... Yeah. Um, it's uh -oh music. Moral. It's got to be whoa, real whoa, uh -oh whoa. music. No, it's more like boom, boom, boom. It's, it's, it's Jaws. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll dig through my library of sounds. <laughs> Here, turn that up, Burke. Is that sinister enough? Do it again here. I don't hear it. Moral panic. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh, that's nice. Yeah. I'll, buy yeah. you. I'll buy you that. Here's another one. Let's try this here. One more time. Moral panic. I think you need a little more panic in your voice, Leo. <laughs> I think I think you need the moral panic and here. then the dum. Oh, time it better. I, okay. I think, yeah, time it. Moral panic. Moral panic. Moral <laughs> panic. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that. We'll workshop that. I like giving Leo notes. That's good. That's good. Yeah. We have way too much fun on the show. <laughs> we have way too much time in our lives. Moral I was about to say, I think it's time. Panic. Moral panic. Moral <laughs> panic. Oh, this is making me so happy. <laughs> I, I, I think we need to cut the sound a little short. <laughs> And then we'll get there. <laughs> I will. I will fix it on my end. When will we three meet again in fire, lightning, or in moral <laughs> panic? <laughs> okay. You want a heartbeat a of... and a shark sound, and yeah. All right. We can. Heartbeat I can work on shark that. Sound. <laughs> I was a radio production director for many years. I could put some. Something together. We get that. We get those notes from the morning guy. I need a moral panic sound. <laughs> got it for you. Yeah, got well, it. yeah. I mean, I feel there like you, you know, a lot of people listen to the show. We should be aware and, and try to give them some fun as well. By the way, yeah. the other Washington Post headline that caught my eye: Why Amazon is ramping up its push for legalizing marijuana. So there. <laughs> <laughs> now that's link bait. I didn't I, see this. I clicked on that one oh, right it, away. It also why? explains. I think this story explains why they stopped testing their employees for marijuana. Yeah. Well, I know ago. why they stopped testing. Uh, them. Hmm. Well, who cares if they're high? Nice angle. Let them be high. Wait, wait, why? Well, there's a business angle. What? What's it go? Explain that story to, <laughs> to Stacey. Okay. Legalizing pot could also open the door to a lucrative new market for the online retailer. But Amazon says it's not interested in selling pot. They just want to remove hiring impediments, which disproportionately impact individuals of color. 
so and they want to sell a few bombs and a few bombs. Yeah, there are more. We can't. They can't. Uh, Petaluma has not allowed uh, legal marijuana is legal in California, but they've not allowed stores to open uh, selling pot in uh, in town. But there are about eight hundred bong stores. I don't know. Yeah, it's like <laughs> right. Go out of town, get your get your dope, but come back to buy the pipe. I, it's yeah, very ten, go go ten minutes away and then come back. To yeah. Town. <laughs> I'm deeply, Elizabeth Warren, I'm deeply skeptical that Amazon's lobbying is anything more than a self-interested move to monopolize another market. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Potentially blocking black and Latino entrepreneurs from an emerging industry. Oh, God. Why are people associating race with marijuana use? That seems not so good. Well, it certainly no. has been happening no. in the justice system where people who are thrown right. in jail for marijuana sales... Are right. disproportionately yep. people of color. It's true. For instance, I feel like I mean in Washington time. State, many of the owners of the marijuana dispensaries are not people of color. Yeah, that's and that's the issue is people suffered from this industry when it was underground, and now the opportunity should be given to those communities that were made to suffer by the justice system. Oh, that's and they're interesting. Not that's interesting. Okay, that seems yeah. It's a little. So I think that's what she's not saying. Well, that's what your yeah. point. Yeah, it is. It is yeah. a little bit. What do you think, Aunt? Yeah, I. I mean, you are a person of color. Sorry, it seems I, like I, I muted myself. <laughs> seems, yeah, were you swearing? <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> no, it, yeah, I agree. It, it is totally disproportionate. Um, I said I want to say I mentioned this the other week, where if somebody gets in trouble for a marijuana charge or what have you and they get thrown they literally get the book thrown at them and they get these ridiculous sentencing is disproportionate disproportion. you know yeah. that's the thing well yeah. prosecution too yeah uh okay flock here's one from protocol flock is dead but topics won't fix google's ad targeting problems it just seems like rearranging deck chairs on the sinking ship of targeted ads I like that headline better. Yeah, it's not as bad. Is the uh, is the ship sinking of targeted ads? I guess maybe it is. Well, it's listing yeah, to port heavily. It is. Yeah, this I, I Especially can use with my more number regulation. now. Oh, go for it. So, okay, all right, thank you. Um, so, and I've talked about this before, but but Instacart under Fiji Simo, former uh, head of the newsfeed at, at Facebook, uh, the new CEO there, is going to go heavily into advertising. Makes sense, right? It's a low margin business, grocery, and we can push you. No, buy the Pepsi Dent this week, right? So advertising there makes sense. Amazon has built tremendous, uh, quietly built a tremendous advertising business that's challenging Google. Best Buy now sells floor space, rents out floor space as marketing. Best they've Buy always, is an advertising medium. They've always done uh, that. Grocery TV stores sets. have always made more money by pricing pr and products at eye level or end caps. Right, but there's, now there's new them. players. Instacart is a new player. Yeah. Amazon is a new player in advertising. Uh, Best Buy is a new player in this way. Um, uh, TV set makers, we talked about that in the show. Yeah. And what finally occurred oh, yeah. to me today in Twitter was that all these industries are going into advertising as media is leaving advertising. And media is saying, oh, we give up. We're going to put paywalls I'll give on. you a different perspective. All these industries are going into it as margins from their primary business drop. Yes, yes. And what they're doing is they're saying, well, look, you know, people will buy more TVs if we can charge a third what we used to charge. We'll make up the difference in ad putting ads on. And I understand that. They're and it's meeting. kind of, in a way, consumers are telling them that. Drop the price. We'll put yeah. up with the ads. Hmm. And they're meeting consumers where they're shopping. I mean, if I'm no longer, if Instacart, if I'm using Instacart, I'm not seeing what the end caps that people paid so much money to yeah. uh, to Ooh. Kroger for getting their well, stuff and there. How much, so of this, space. how much of this also comes from, to, to your point exactly, Stacey, uh, people under 30 don't watch TV anymore. They don't read newspapers. Right. You know, uh, we get advertisers because there's no e-week or PC week for uh, enterprise companies to buy ads in. They're trying desperately to figure out how do we reach our customers. I understand that. That's That makes sense. So, right. so, so, so all, it's coming in from both directions. Is. Companies trying to lower prices, find another yep. way to make money, well, and advertisers desperate to reach an audience. That, that's, right. That's and so rather than fixing, rather than coming up with new models that make advertising work, the ad, the, the media business is basically giving up. They're all acting like Apple. Ah, screw it. And, and so you have 
Wall Street Journal and, and companies like that trying to make it more difficult around advertising. That's why they're 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 ganging up with odd uh, bedfellows here. And and media should be in the business of saying, no, let's find new services for marketing to hold on to that subsidy. But they've but they've just they've just surrendered. So it's a it's a interesting time we live in. Uh, we are, you know, we've always been ad supported, but mm -hmm. uh, as advertisers have kind of, you know, COVID kind of drove advertising down, um, diversity in uh, podcasts uh, drove audience numbers down. We've seen dwindling revenue. That's why we started Club Twit as another way to support us. Um, and it's interesting because we we kind of consciously said, well, if you don't like ads, would you be willing to pay seven bucks a month for ad free content? And to this day, it's still only a few percentage, maybe 2% of our total audience mm -hmm. that is willing to pay not to have ads. So, and I'm not sure if that's a reflection of- And what's even funnier is those that signed up, we still get a large percentage of them to say, We want I the, ads. the ads. I know, that's the funniest thing. <laughs> I know, that cracks me up. I love the ads. It's yeah. just like, okay. we want more. Well, is that the wrong just pitch? <laughs> so some people want to support us. Well, the pitch is- to support, to support us as well as yeah. if you don't want ads that we don't yeah. if you give us seven bucks a month we don't need to play ads for you because you're giving us what we would make uh right. for you from an advertiser so that's you know but uh, but it's such a small percentage i have to think it may also reflect the fact that people not, have figured out how to skip ads people are pretty well, it's also not seeing or hearing ads yeah. npr stations get six to twelve percent of their audience giving money to the station that's right? a that, huge that took amount. a long time so to build. That's okay. a huge, that's and they only do it by bugging the hell out of you, a lot. Exactly. So, so no, it's the could free you get the five percent? <laughs> it's the free. It's all about the free tote bag. <laughs> the tote bag. I want my. I want my. You know what? I want a sweater vest. I want a twit sweater vest. Then I'll give money to you. <laughs> Trust me. You I want to oh walk gosh, around. Could we all me. get? You want twin sweater, sweater vests? vests and bow ties? <laughs> and bow ties. Oh, this would be so oh, yes. adorable. I think Somebody we have to Miss Ashley beautiful. on the horn. <laughs> I mean, how cute would that be? When I first started working in radio, I worked for a funky little station called KLOK, Clock Radio, right? Clock Radio. Okay. And it was all men. This is, you know, it was all men. And so the, 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 man, the men from Clock, and they all had mustard yellow jackets with the clock logo no. on it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> Elitist, huh? And there'd be billboards with the men from clock in their, in their mustard colored blazers. So I'm going to say no to mustard. That is an unflattering <laughs> color on a lot of people. Say. But I'll wear a blazer. Thank you, Miss Stacey. Fezzes. We could all wear fezzes if you want. I yep. feel like that could be culturally appropriative. <laughs> We'd have to ah. investigate that. <laughs> Even I don't know. After Ataturk said we don't want them, I think we can. Uh, anybody, they're ever they're open to all. Well, yeah, open to all. <laughs> um, I want to take a little break. Come back uh, with more with this. In fact, I am going to do something unheard of. Stacy picks the next story. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, you, know, you can this do it a later. Democracy? Democracy? <laughs> Maybe it's a, sta a Stacyocracy. It's a Stacyocracy. That's the best kind of ocracy. Yeah. Stacyocracy coming up next. But first, a word from our sponsor. And the thing is, we I like to choose sponsors that we like, that we have a relationship with. And I feel like it's not a um, an ad to kind of twist your arm. It's more like I'd like to introduce you to something. And I think this is this is one thing I, I tell my kids this. Uh, I, I want to introduce you to Wealthfront. So, you know, you know, when you're young, you 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 want to do the latest thing. I want to do NFTs. I want to buy Bitcoin. My daughter wanted to buy Dogecoin. I said, honey, it's fine. You know, you can play with that. But please, would you put the bulk? First of all, are you saving for your retirement? When you're 25, you don't think about that. If only I had. I'd have so much more if I'd started young. Start now, put some money aside, save a little bit for playtime, for day trading, whatever. This Week in Google is brought to you by Wealthfront. It makes it easy to invest, easy to grow your savings with what every expert tells you you need, a diversified portfolio that balances your other 
riskier slash more fun bets. You can start investing in no time with Wealthfront's classic portfolio. You can also make it your own with the things you care about. And Abby really liked this, social responsible funds. Uh, you could do a technology fund. I think a lot of you might be interested in this. Yeah, if you want to do crypto, they've got crypto trusts. There are hundreds of other investments. Wealthfront was designed by financial experts to do the right thing, to help you turn your ideas into great investments, but without having you have to do everything yourself. You'll see, I, if you just look at the Wealthfront site, you could pick the category you want to invest in, but then they'll do it right. For instance, they'll do tax loss harvesting, the lower your tax bill. That's complicated. They help you do that. Uh, they will rebalance your portfolio. Do you know what rebalancing is? Did you know you're supposed to do that at least quarterly? Wealthfront does it for you automatically. It's doing the right thing. That's the experts at work there. Now, now today, since we started talking about Wealthfront some years ago, $28 billion in assets. Half a million people building their wealth at Wealthfront. It's easy to get started. $500 to get started. Grow your wealth the easy way. Prepare for retirement or buying that house or the kids in college. All of the stuff you should be saving for. If you want to have fun investing you know, to the moon, with your diamond hands, that's fine. But Wealthfront is so simple, so powerful. It's got an app. In fact, the App Store uh, app is great. 4.9 out of 5 stars on the Apple App Store. To so start building your wealth. By the way, we've got a kind of nice uh, little uh, enticement for you. Your first $5,000 will be managed free for life, forever. What a great way to start that nest egg. Wealthfront.com slash twig. It's just the easy way to do it, the right way to do it. W-E-A-L-T-H-F-R-O-N-T dot com slash twig. Start building your wealth. Wealthfront dot com slash twig. We thank them for supporting twig. And you're supporting us by using that uh, address. So please get the slash twig in there. Wealthfront dot com slash twig. There were so many good things to choose from, Stacy. What did you... What did you, what caught your eye? I want to talk about ID me and the IRS. Perfect. That's exactly what I was going to talk about. Oh, good. Because it's minds, really confusing. It? So <laughs> the IRS, and they've kind of backtracked a little bit on this, but I don't think the backtrack is real. I, it's a little confusing. The, yes. I, I, I've seen on the site even, if you go to irs.gov, they say coming this summer, if you wanted, there's certain things they want to extra security, right? So they've caught, this is the troubling thing. They've contracted with a third party, a company a lot of states are working with called ID.me. The states are doing it to try to eliminate fraud in uh, things like um, COVID loans and, uh, and you know, uh, unemployment. And ID.me is a, a way of authenticating yourself. Okay, so there's the kind of the synopsis was tell me Stacy what you think of this story well originally I was like what the what because at first it sounded like the IRS was going to make all of us upload our biometric information and I was like this is a bad plan um for so many reasons right what could and now it's coming in <laughs> yeah I'm like oh <laughs> and then now they're saying no you can still pay your taxes and do things it's going to be a little bit more onerous, but you can still not use this. But in totally separate news, and I'm still trying to figure out what the heck ID me is actually using. So they're saying they're not using uh, facial recognition, but they are. And this is this is where I'm like, this is why we're talking so about this, because I am like still trying to figure out things they could be doing <laughs> with the IRS. You know, they're saying you take a selfie, and sometimes they want it to be moving, by the way, so it's not just a picture of a picture. So a selfie, hi, it's me, and we will use that picture of you to verify that it's you. But then they were accused, that's called one-to-one -one face, face recognition, right? But then they were mm -hmm. accused of doing something that is much more disturbing, which is called one-to-many face matching steps, which means... Uh, it's the kind of thing that um, Clearview AI was using, where I take a picture of Stacy and then I try to match it in a database of many people. And that's a lot more uh, concerning because it's not then just about authentication. You're being added to a large database. They, it's, so in his LinkedIn post, Blake Hall 
who uh, the CEO of the, IDB is the CEO says he made it clear as mud. We avoid disclosing methods we use to stop identity theft and organized crime because it jeopardizes their effectiveness. Okay. Criminals are constantly adapt. He's got a lot of excuses. ID.me uses a specific one-to-many check on selfies tied to government programs targeted by organized crime to prevent prolific identity thieves. In other words, they're going to match your picture against a database. It's almost like going to the police department and looking through the mug sheet to see if you're a member of organized crime. He says, this step is internal to ID.me and does not involve any external or government database. It occurs once during enrollment and exists to make sure a single attacker is not registering multiple identities. That kind of makes sense. The one-to-one -one would not register that. It wouldn't know if you've done well, this 12 times. This step is not... What here's, his, here's his out. This step is not tied to identity verification. It does not block legitimate users from verifying their identity, nor is it used for any other purpose than to prevent identity theft. Data so sh shows that like removing this control would immediately lead to significant identity theft and organized crime. The one-to-one -one face match step is the only step we use to verify identity. <laughs> but he's, it sounds to me like he's also saying, but we're also going to do the one-to-many. So it sounds, here's what I'm wondering, because like Brian Krebs went through the process to register his face. Um, and he said, so as part of that, there was a, a person who actually registered. So that's the one-to-one. -one. And now Brian Krebs has his IRS ID me profile. Right. What I'm guessing is if Brian Krebs were a fraudster and tried to do it again under the name of Pete Johnson, Pete Johnson, when he went to try to do this, that would be a one-to-one, -one, but they would have to check the face of Pete Johnson against their one-to-many database, right. and they would recognize that Pete Johnson is also Brian Krebs. Right. That's what I'm hoping they're trying to say. I think that's what they are saying. I don't, yeah. Which is okay. That's, that's not terrible. But that means every single... So this is my problem. Every single time I set up an ID.me account, which I'm going to need to log into the IRS for certain things like paying your taxes or getting your refund. Well, you don't have to. That's what they, the IRS has said that you don't have to. But you're going to be more so convenient to sure. This is con it confusing will be more convenient. unless they've changed your policy. Because here's the page Brian Krebs publishes. If you have an existing IRS username, please create a new ID me account as soon as possible. You won't be able to log in with your existing IRS name and password starting summer 2022. Now, maybe they've so changed that. Gizmodo's story has an editor's note saying that you can still file and pay taxes without logging into an IRS account or providing biometric data, which contradicts information an IRS spokesperson previously provided. Um, <laughs> they also pointed out that this was a really frustrating correction. Um, if you go down to... I think the thing is pay taxes, fine. If you're going to give us money, fine. You want to claim a refund, you're going to need to use ID.me. There are, I think this is weasel words. There are some things you don't uh, need to yeah. use ID.me for, but there are also some things you must use ID.me for. So my problem, there are a couple. One is it's a third party. It's not, it's a, I guess, I mean, but they're going to have a lot of face recognition information because with a one-to-many system, they have to store everybody's face. With a one-to-one -one system, they don't. With a one-to-many, they have to store everybody's face. That means they're going to have a database of every single person mm. who logs into the IRS but using the system. ID.me has that, not yes. the IRS. No, and ID... Well, that's but my ID problem. Oh, okay, well, no, 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 no. I get it, I get it. But ID.me ID me already has this database because... Well, already has many people in the database. It doesn't have me until I... Those yeah, services. right, yeah. Well, until you get your... Okay, so your issue is you don't want to. They used to, by the way. IRS used things. to use Equifax to do this. Oh yeah. gosh! So, so that oh, was a gosh. problem. They got rid of that <laughs> because. And here's the problem: Why did they get rid of Equifax? Because they had a massive data breach. Breach. <clears throat> so now they got ID me, and a data breach here would be ten times worse, because it wouldn't just be your social security number; it'd be your social security number and your face. And you're right. Like it's un, it's still unclear if the IRS, I think what's happening is there's a lot of backlash 
and the IRS is suddenly like, uh, I don't know if we can force everybody. I mean, because you have to pay your taxes. You can't. I mean, basically, you're well, legally no, now. That's why they're saying you can pay your state. taxes without it. They never implied that you couldn't pay your taxes. It's if you want to. There's some things that you have to do it for. And so, well, so what is a good system for can, verified identity? Well, this is the problem. This is a good system. <sighs> Ideally, you would have, I mean, would you make the underlying security aspects of it not open source? But like, I mean, yes, you need a database of faces and information if you're going to use faces for security. Right? Krebs, Krebs looked uh, at their security and he said, you know, they do all the security in depth stuff, blah, 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 blah. So maybe it is secure. Here's the real problem. Um, there are, you can't change your face. <laughs> really, or fingerprints. When you're giving people biometrics, you're giving them something permanent. Even a social security number can be changed. But when you give them biometrics, that's it. It's over. And if that if that leaks out, that becomes... And if it's used as a basis an, an unfixable for transactions. Problem. Yeah, it's an unfixable problem. Right. The, the problem is that well, it's not the data it, breaches. Going... Everything is breached. The problem is using bad structures for transactions... And 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 then that's the problem. It's like the social security number wasn't supposed to be used for everything, right? But it became used for everything. So what yeah, if right. the face ends but, up being used for every banking thing, and then it gets misused? And, and that's where the problem. Comes there's in a further the issue end. because ID.me looks like they've not been fully transparent on this. At first, they say, "Oh no, it's one to one," and they say, "But we have to use one to many." Oh, now we're not going to tell you because we don't got crooks to know. And um, this is what uh, Caitlin Seely George, who's campaign director for fight for the future says we already know this company is willing to say anything in order to get more government contracts the ceo of id.me has been peddling erroneous numbers about unemployment benefit fraud but the fact that the irs knew about this discrepancy is a big problem the only responsible thing for the irs and any other state or federal agency using id.me to do is to stop these contracts immediately um so well, there's some, I don't, I, that's the, the part CEO's of the a liar is like, well, here's my here's my big worry and issue, and we're already getting there. But if you have a government entity, sure, this is the kind of services side of the government, but having a database of your face and all the relevant information about you, in that it becomes centralized, that can be used across. I, my worry is it can be used across all government agencies to find you or to like, it, technically, I guess it already can be. And we're already seeing that with like the nationwide ID programs. But understanding who has access to your face data and all the personally identifiable information associated that with that and what they can use that for. Can they use it for tracking you if you haven't paid a parking ticket using right. like city cameras? Right. Um, can they sell that to a private company to track like what stores you go in? I mean, like my concern is this is really rich, valuable data. And I want to see really hard rules about how it's stored, secured, and then limited in use. Okay, but Stacey, it's not going to be secure. It's it's some there's going to be a breach, so then the next question becomes. Oh, then, you're, then, I think you're right. Everything you said. Yeah. The next question it's is: if it is breached, what could be done with it? What else would depend upon the same data that could then be misused? Well, I right? I think I mean, I actually don't think being breached is the worst case scenario. I think the worst case scenario is the government has given all this valuable data to a private company who could then turn around and sell that data to. <coughs> I don't know, somebody who like makes traffic cameras and then you suddenly have like or parking lot cameras. So you know where Stacy Higginbotham is based on camera data, wherever I am in my day, for example. And I mean, it's kind of like location data from from phones, which we might talk about later because mm -hmm. there's a lawsuit about that. Th that's more my concern. I mean, yes, it probably will get breached, but yeah. Yeah, and, and will the government's database, would that be any more secure than ID.me? Um, I mean, I think a lot of this comes... No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's part of the problem is, yeah. Who, who, gonna, yeah who, this is, I mean, I don't... We I'd keep assembling it. all this valuable stuff and we're like, yeah, we know that security is not 100%, but hey, let's take all of our gold and stick it someplace... Right, right here. 
<laughs> Throw the government a bone. They may secure it. I mean, we just had the whole um, COVID testing site go up that was hosted by the government that didn't crash as soon as we launched it. So maybe there's hope on security too. Well, and you know, the, the the government may already have your photo because they they use DMV photos. They do. So, oh yeah, well, that, <laughs> they started that with they started now taking your DMV photos and creating the nationwide database. Remember, right. initially it was statewide, and then several states signed up to participate. Twenty one states, and now six hundred forty one yeah. million drivers' license and ID photos from twenty one states went to federal law enforcement databases. And then we really share with other 130 million people. Yeah. Why do we have so many driver's license? <laughs> That's a good point. There's more driver's licenses than there are people. Uh, I don't That's know. That's not right. This is consumer reports. <laughs> I trust them. I don't know. Federal agencies. Okay, sorry. No, I'm just like, wait, we don't have that population. Thanks for the sanity check. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, how many pictures have you had taken over the years? Uh, a lot. About uh, 2016, the Center on Privacy and Technology reported about half of all American adult faces are already in police facial recognition <laughs> databases. So maybe this, maybe it's silly to worry about this because this this ship has sailed. Federal. Well, then Bureau we have to figure out rules for how they can use that. In you know, FBI uses uh, DMV photos. Uh, mm -hmm. ICE uses uh, DMV photos. Uh, I mean, it's not. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And actually, th this is an article in Consumer Reports from three years ago. But they even address this thing about the difference between a phone face ID on a phone, which is one to one, and one to many. Uh, when we do f what we do on a phone is authentication. We're simply comparing two face images. But when law enforcement is searching for a person of interest, the system has to search against a large database of millions or even a hundred million photos. And that introduces this problem: the accuracy of facial recognition goes down as the size of a database increases. That's one of the concerns about using it for criminal law enforcement. Uh, is it's not you know, and we've seen this: people go into jail in uh, incorrectly because. They were identified in a digital lineup. So, anyway, yeah, it's a, I'm glad you brought it up because that that is exactly one of the topics I wanted to talk about. And I don't know what I think. I want. I mean, we certainly want it to be more secure. Maybe the government already yep. does have all those photos anyway. So, but should this third party ID dot me be able, allowed to collect all? Well, how of much these fraud people's... is there now? What what's the problem they're trying to solve? Big, apparently, IRS? a big. According to I, well, and this is the other thing. ID.me's CEO says, oh, it's big. Big problem. We, we, we're, here, we're just here to solve. Yeah. <laughs> so. There's a lot of fraud for um, parents committing tax fraud against their kids. So yeah. they actually like, mm -hmm. but this wouldn't solve that because if you're the first person to authenticate as, like if I authenticated as my daughter, for example, then I become the canonical image for her. ID.me ID ID. has said there's been massive unemployment benefit fraud. They say 30% of states have uh, seen, there's, what, what, is the, what is the number they said? Ooh, Washington lost like a billion dollars yeah. in ID Many states, this is from last year, are seeing a 30% fraud rate, according to ID.me. <laughs> um, and of course, this is self-serving information. And that's one of the things um, that she was referring to uh, when she said that he's been, you know, kind of misleading about this information. Um, we did get a lot of fraud. I, I mean, there is, there was a lot of unemployment insurance fraud, but I don't know how much IRS fraud versus unemployment. ID. Fraud. The IRS is big. says $400 billion in pandemic unemployment fraud. Un well, unproven. That's that's another case. Yeah, well, that's a that's <sighs> another case. Un unproven, but that that's the kind of stuff that the states are using them for. Uh, that we that was at least a number billion, he gave Axios. But... Yeah, four hundred billion dollars is a lot of money by cyber criminal gangs. And then that number, by the way, then parroted by the. Uh, top Republican on the House Ways and Means Committee, Kevin Brady. Yeah. So it suddenly becomes, uh, you know, truth. Oh, 
Oregon paid only 24 million in fraudulent unemployment benefits during the pandemic. The total so. amount of government payouts was 800 billion. So they're saying half of that money was fraudulent. Seems like a large number. California says 20 billion. 20 billion is what they paid out in fraud? Mm -hmm. Fraudulent unemployment payments okay. during the pandemic. 11% of what it paid out overall. Yeah, Not we had half. 650 million yeah. in Washington. So that's yeah. a lot. <laughs> Hall, Hall, by the way, uh, says uh, to this day, it's accurate, according to Bloomberg Business Week. He said it's confirmed in patterns the data company, the data the company has gathered through its work for California, Florida, New York, Pennsylvania, Texas, and 22 other states. He says if state agencies are reporting far lower levels of fraud publicly, well, they're wrong. <laughs> okay. He says this is the largest cyber attack in terms of fraud in American history. And that's okay. that's what's giving some people a little bit of uh, qualms about ID.me. Yeah. Are that's they overstating this to, to get this government contract? Yes. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised. I know, but we don't know. We See, don't that's, know. That's marketing, right? That's sales. ID.me began 12 years ago as Troop Swap, a Craigslist knockoff for the military community. <laughs> that's a pivot. <laughs> then they ah. turned it into a Groupon style <laughs> discount service. Then they realized the real asset of Troop Swap was the software, which allowed veterans to prove their eligibility without presenting documents bearing social security numbers. They, they said, hmm, hmm. Um, Hall and Thompson, both ex-military, but neither of whom had a tech background, saw an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I always, anybody say. who does a lot of deals with the government, I'm always like, mm, you're sketch. <laughs> the yep. Obama administration, yep. this is all from Bloomberg Businessweek. The Obama administration had announced the National Strategy for Trusted Identities in Cyberspace, a push to get private sector companies to develop ID verification technologies. The Troop Swap team bought the ID.me domain, rebranded, and won a $2.6 million grant from the Commerce Department's National Institutes of Standards and Technology. Hmm. Anyway, there's more to this. This is a deeper story. I'm sure we'll be reading more of this. It's interesting. And, uh, you know. Yeah. Yep. There you go. There you have it. Um, what do we think about the end of the line for Google Cloud's G Suite Free Edition? If you have a G Suite Free Edition, you're going to have to upgrade to a paid version Starting July 1st. They should have long ago. And this is yeah. true for me because I pay, I pay already. I, I mean, you hear me complain about it all the time. The G Suite is, 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 is now built for big companies. Yeah. They should have a light individual or family edition of it that says all you want is your own domain, some email. Here's the deal. And that's what, but, that's what it was used for, right? That's, where, have, that's why I'm there. Yeah, you'd but have a custom domain. They've overcomplicated the hell out of it on the high end. They've taken away features because it's so complicated. We can't get as as Google users, and um, they shouldn't treat you know the individual who 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 was grandfathered now like a company. It's only six bucks a month. It's not that bad. Um, they stopped but, offering the free tier ten years ago. ago. Yeah, yeah. twenty twelve. But you were grandfathered. But you still had it. So there's people who have been all along. They got a domain name. It's just them. They That's get my the, wife. Uh, they That's get a smaller has. version of G Suite. So she's going to have to start paying in July. Yeah. Yeah. How does she feel about that? She doesn't know yet. She'll, she'll roll <laughs> she'll her eyes and say, what did you get me into? Not me and Jake. Yeah. No, I mean, that was uh, a good idea. I'm kind of glad I didn't do that. But we, uh, Twit pays the, you know, we have, we use Yeah, because you run servers and things. Yeah. So we pay the six bucks per seat. And everybody's got an at, and twit.tv is through that. That's the email, mm -hmm. not the website, but the email. And um, yeah. yeah, and we use we use G Suite. Or I'm sorry, Workspace. I'm, I'm using it right now as a Google Sheet that we use to share the inform, you know, the stories with all the hosts and to follow mm -hmm. the stories. So Simon Bodger sent me a um, thing from GitHub 
uh, a G Suite migration plan that goes into some detail about this. Huh. Um, uh, what line is that? It's not yet. It will be in a second. <laughs> what good are you? <laughs> one fifty. So I'm gonna make you scroll. Yeah. It's why you make me? Why you make me scroll? Okay. It's fun to watch that. GitHub G Suite migration. So this is uh, software that'll just move you over to a paid. No, I don't think. No, this is the process. Oh God. Yeah. It's not. Doesn't look yeah, simple. It's a, it's a typical Google process. Wow. Yeah. Love Gmail that. migratable, yes. Gmail rules, yes. Uh, Google Talk Hangouts, no. This is sad. Well, that's because they killed it. Right. Google right. Drive, yes. <laughs> uh, but migratable to what? Right. Well, you get Google Drive if you pay the six. Oh, he, this is if you don't want to pay six bucks. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. If I a G Suite account really remains that. unpaid, Google will convert the account to a Google identity. This is an incomplete Google account, which does not include Gmail and Calendar, but for some reason includes Google Drive. I'll tell you why. They don't want to delete your data. While many yeah. Google services work with Google Identity, its usage is inconvenient, and one will be required to be logged into several accounts to use free Gmail. So you're going to have all sorts of identities. Um, so here's his. this is how to get out of G Suite Google to free Google accounts and what tools you'll need. And how you will do it. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. It's quite a few. A lot of steps there. Quite a few so, steps. You know. Yeah. So six bucks a month. Uh, but I, I think I'm missing the opportunity just to do a different offer. Fine. Charges for the services. You I give them you know, for a fine. buck. If you, if you only have one person using it, you know, a, a buck. We, I mean, we pay, what? We pay $6 a person? I mean, yeah. you can't pay $6 or, right. I mean... You're, you get a lot for that money, by the way. I should yeah. say. Yeah, you get like totally fifteen fair. gigs. So <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I just, like, like if you're you also sad. get complications. Now that's my problem. It's because you entered in. Because then when I use this against my Chromebook and I want to mm. add something, oh no no, you must get the uh, administrator to do this. And I then I start screaming on Twitter and people have but to calm me down and send me drugs. <laughs> yeah, I am the administrator. I mean, um, I'm an idiot. What are you doing to me? And so that's the problem, Stacey, is that, is that it's, it's yes, yeah, six bucks a month and you get a whole lot of services. Absolutely. But you also get headaches whenever Google introduces something new and you can't. Well, you could most, I mean, like I mark Google G Suite administrator for Stacey on IoT. So there's four licenses out and I am the person. You're a genius. Handles, and I, I have this. I have the same frustrations you have, Jeff. I, I don't yell as loudly on Twitter, but, but I mean, I should it's point, not that often. I should point out that. There are still you. This is not changing the free Gmail, the free Google right. Drive. I mean, yeah. I, right. this is only it's if you only want if you to want use a custom domain. domain. So right. I have my name at gmail.com. I have a Google Drive under that name and which all of that prefer, stuff. Which That's, you should pay for. <laughs> no, it's free. No, I'm saying people wanting to go custom. Should well, actually, cost on I that. do pay for it because I have a Google One plan which means i mm -hmm. so i have two terabytes oh, yeah. of google drive and blah because what do they give you 50 gigabytes or something it's not usually it's you're not enough run through that if you have gmail so alone. google probably just feels like if you're sophisticated enough to run to own your own domain and to want That's to pretty run sophisticated. that through them yeah yeah i mean because you also have to you have a server afford. so you're either running your own server or you're going to hire someone to do it you know, so yep. that's pretty sophisticated. They figure you could be your own IT administrator. If if you nah, want, there are a lot cheaper option. ways than six bucks a person per month. If you just want email at your own domain, that's, well, I also want my Gmail. Yes, I like that is Gmail. true. Or if you want to use, well, you, oh, well, I can still use Gmail. I just have it forward to Gmail and then log into my Gmail yeah. account. You can still use that. So I have, so I have my own custom domains. And for a long time, email to me would go to my Gmail account. And actually, <laughs> I had a really complicated setup because I did that because I Gmail was good at spam. And then I would have it forwarded from my oh. Gmail account to another mail server. So I was kind of yeah. running my mail through Gmail for the spam filtering. You yeah. and Dvorak. Dvorak was insisting that he had better spam. And I never had any spam. And you said, no, I got Gmail and it works fine. He used a, uh, some guy service. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get no spam. 
I think we even had a song. <laughs> you did. I did. I, I get those files. I get I mean, <laughs> um, Yeah, he was famous for that. Uh, and I'm sure he must have gotten spam, but who knows? Anyway, Gmail was very good. Actually, I stopped doing that because Gmail spam filtering is not that good. It's still good. Yeah. Oh, it's not? You don't think so? No. I get so much spam. My biggest problem is that I was, it was Laporte at Gmail. And that sounds French. So I was getting not only spam, but I was getting a lot of French spam. Oh, right. <laughs> How classy right. of you. <laughs> right. Oh. Actually, what did I get the other day in French? Oh, from my uh, employer. iHeart sent me an email. They do every six months, even though this is no longer the recommendation. They, they uh, change your password. They expire your password every six months. So annoying. Because I only log in once, like every six months. So they sent me an email, but what was weird is they sent it to me in English and French. And I was trying to figure out, do they think I'm French? Clearly they do. <laughs> Clearly yeah. they do. You got to you gotta make sure every, you got to know all of that. Yeah. Or is it, there's some sort of Canadian thing, but they're not a Canadian well, company. Canadian. No, they're no. not a Canadian Are they a company. French company? No. It's, it was an odd thing. I have to ask my boss. Why did you send me this in French? <laughs> <laughs> Changer le password. <laughs> how about this? This Actually, let's take a break, and then we'll, I have a lot of how about this is coming up, but I want to talk a little bit about my mm -hmm. food. Tomorrow, our Imperfect Foods box comes. You said, Stacey, were you, you, somebody was using Imperfect Foods. I love Imperfect Foods. I have foods. done it in the past, yeah. I just blew me away. So Imperfect you can put the lower third up. It's okay. Imperfect Foods. This is an ad. <laughs> there you go. That's it. This is an ad. Um, Imperfect Foods was started because they noticed that a lot of foods were thrown away because the grocer wouldn't put, because they want that beautiful display of perfect apples. But as you may know, if you've ever gone to an apple orchard, most apples aren't perfect. And in fact, I'll be honest with you, the small ones, maybe th those are the sweetest. Those are the best apples. Because we used to go, we used to pick our apples and I knew which ones to get. Not the perfect ones that have been stored in, in, a, in a refrigerator and bread so that they could be stored in a refrigerator six months before they go on the grocery shelf. So Imperfect Foods said, we should really solve this problem because it turns out I didn't realize this about a third more than a third 35 percent of the food supply in this country goes unsold uneaten and because it's not perfect so imperfect foods was started as a as a delivery service so you could you know kind of be a good person and get delicious foods I have to tell you we've been subscribing to imperfect foods for some time now I've never had anything I wouldn't go. That's great. Sometimes I thought we were going to get a lot of food that looked like Richard Nixon, you know, like carrots with a big nose and stuff. But no, there's a few sometimes. Or the pomegranates aren't as big as your head. They're only as big as your fist, things like that. I think those are sweeter anyway. Now Imperfect Foods does a whole lot more. They do meats. They do dairy. They do snacks. All of it, food that w the grocers, they overproduced it or they didn't want it. It's great. You'll reduce food waste. It'll save you time on your grocery shopping, and you will eat more fresh, delicious food. Plus, you're, you're really helping the, the environment. So not only does that food not get wasted, right, but you're also, because instead of going to the grocery store, the Imperfect Foods uh, delivers, they bunch all deliveries in your neighborhood together on a single day. So everybody in, in our area is Thursday. One truck. That means there's 25% to 75% fewer emissions than if we were all going to the grocery store. That's awesome. On average, Imperfect Foods customers save six to eight pounds of food with every order. But I don't want to emphasize that. You're going to feel good about doing good, but you're going to get great food too. Look, go to imperfectfoods.com. Check first to see if they deliver in your area. I don't want to oversell this if you can't get it. I don't want to make you feel bad. But if you can... Trust me, you should do it. Sign up. You can personalize your weekly grocery order with fresh seasonal produce, pantry staples, yummy snacks. It'll arrive on the same day every week. Won't necessarily be Thursday. That's just my neighborhood. But it's nice because you know that box is going to be there. They're really good on packaging, too. That's the other thing. Unlike some grocery delivery services where you get 100 plastic bags, uh, you could say goodbye to packaging guilt. Imperfect Foods is the only national grocery delivery company 
that makes it easy to return your packaging after every order. We do that. They don't do a lot of plastic bags. Um, it's just, it, you can tell it's thoughtful. It's thoughtful, and that's why I really like it. It is a great grocery delivery service that you will love, and I want you to try it. In fact, we've got a deal for you. Get your first four orders 20% off, 20% off, not just for the first one, but for the first four orders when you go to imperfectfoods.com. But you have to do this for me. Use the promo code TWIG to get that offer. T-W-I-G. That way they know you saw it here, too. 20% off your first four orders. That's up to an $80 value at imperfectfoods.com when you use the promo code TWIG. We love it. From my family to yours, I think you'll love it, too. Imperfectfoods.com. Promo code TWIG. Good way to really uh, feel good about what you're eating and it has helped the environment and get delicious. I think it's perfect, personally, food. Uh, I want to see Hank, Hank do an Imperfect Foods challenge. Oh, he should. Here, Hank. Ooh, here's a box. He should. Ooh. What can you make with this? Exactly. We get, I'll tell you the one thing I really love. They have a heritage chicken, which is a little smaller because it's not, you know, it doesn't have the big breasts. All right. It's not the Dolly Parton of chickens. It's not all hormones. It's not all hormones. It's a. It's like a traditional small chicken, and I made it last night. We. Ha it's so good. I roasted at high heat using the Cafe Zuni roasting recipe, and it is so good. It's just. Uh, it's my favorite thing. Uh, anyway, that's 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 free. I'll give that to you for free. <laughs> <laughs> so this was a weird one from zippy.com which is an seo company we studied eighty-one thousand page titles google rewrote 61 percent of them uh what? for what, yes google did? in the search results so here's an example this at all here's an example zippy product guides is that it, you know there's a href title that's how your that's your title for your tags uh, yeah it's a tag in your okay, html yeah. They rewrote it to support and product guide Zippy SEO, which probably is more to what you want, but they're just doing it. They're not asking. They're just doing it. Uh, so apparently if it's too short, they'll rewrite it. If it's too long, they'll obviously truncate it. They is said this for ads. No, this is in the or search results. Content. Search results. Okay. Uh, ask Andrew about this. He must know about this. We mapped 80,000 titles by the number of characters to determine the likelihood of Google rewriting each one. Google rewrites both long titles and extremely short titles over 95% of the time. Titles Where, Where's the data from? Is it other is it other metadata in the page that they just grab instead? If they oh, that's an interesting question. Hmm. They must. Yeah, it you know, be, it's not, a computer doing it, not a human. That, that was one hell of a job. Rewrite that headline, uh, yeah. Joe. No. Um, they said we found a number of common scenarios in which it became more likely for Google to rewrite titles. I guess the really the moral mm -hmm. of this is check. Let's look at your search results. Length if it's too long or too short. Using the same keyword more than once. So they'll just take that second version out. You because well, people were trying to do that to 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 goose, yeah yeah to be that's probably where up. it started. Is they were trying sure. to goose the SEO yeah. by repetition. They don't like title separators like dashes or pipes. They'll take those out. Titles with brackets or parentheses. Identical boilerplate used across many titles. Missing or superfluous brand names. And more. So, uh, very interesting Sounds article. Like actually helpful. Yeah, that's, uh, that's I'm thing. sure, this the goal. Is, Absolutely. It, it, it is helping you out, but at the same time, dang, who gave them the, the, the right <laughs> to just go in and change my stuff like that? You know? <laughs> Here's another one where they took bracket updated 2022 and replaced it with parenthesis 2022 well, that's, update. That's... Well, but yeah, it's weird that they're doing this automatically. So this is a good article, zyppy.com. You could read there. It's in their blog. Um, and how you could use H1 tags. Google considers other HTML elements when crafting page titles beyond title tags. Chief among these are the H1 tags. So... Strategic use of H1 tags might solve that as well. So, interesting. I just thought that was an interesting uh, insight into some of the things Google... Can you imagine the scale that Google does this, that they're doing that? It's amazing. And, yeah, how quickly is this done? Yeah, but instantly. Uh, it's published and stuff. How, yeah. how fast does this go through their process? Oh, it's instant. It has to be, because uh, they're constantly updating. Hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see what else. Can I can I raise one? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, there's all, there's all it's these not Stacey just a Stacyocracy. It can be a Jeffocracy <laughs> as well. What would you like to? Talk and I about? meant to put these two stories together in the rundown, and I somehow screwed this up. Um, I'm fascinated by by auto driving cars. Two two stories of different views. Um, one is that, uh, and I think we might have mentioned this last week. I can't remember that a driver was charged. Yes, we did. Right. Yep. But then tie that in a British law group now recommends immunity for drivers of self-driving cars. I, you know, I think I said this when we talked about the story last week. The guy uh, who was um, charged with, I think, vehicular manslaughter mm -hmm. was using Tesla's self-driving. And this was some years ago that he did this. And it went through a red light and killed a couple of pedestrians. But at the time he was using it, it never, even though Google, Tesla said it's full self-driving, it didn't stop at lights. When I, my, the whole time I had my Model X, it, it wasn't supposed to stop at lights or stop signs or anything else. The mistake, I mean, if, if Tesla's to blame, it's by calling it full self-driving. Right. Mm -hmm. It should be right. really, you know, a driver assist or, you know, because on the highway, it's great. Where there's no stop lights, it's great. And my Ford does the same thing. My Mustang does the same thing. But I would never take it on a city street because it wouldn't stop. So I think he's right to charge this guy. He was misusing the product, but Tesla does yeah. bear some culpability, I think. Oh, so now they're the saying he wasn't the using namesake. full self-driving. It wasn't full self-driving in the... I'm sorry, it wasn't full self-driving. It was auto... Tesla called it autopilot in those days. Yeah. But that right. still implies that it's something's, you know, going to stop, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, Tesla really oversells what yeah. they're doing there. I apologize. Yeah. Yeah. Not full self-driving. That's what Tesla's doing now. And it does stop, theoretically, at stoplights. So that's the bigger question for... And this guy is saying indemnity. The bigger question is, if you trust what full self-driving that claims to be full self-driving, and it isn't, and it does something stupid... Are you liable or is it liable? That's an interesting question. Right. So the Brits, and, and, and here's my get ready, my moral panic analysis of this, is that they love trying to blame technology for everything. So, um, and and so, yeah, I ruined my own punchline there. But, but um, should I it, get it's this, their reflex the reflex to say, music? let's blame the technology company and, and make the driver blameless? Well, no, there's got to be a, some shared blame here in terms of if you if you have the ability to override you see something going on you're still responsible it's your car and and for the brits to come on and recommend the law commission to, commissions multiple to recommend that drivers should not face regulatory and legal sanctions if something goes wrong um okay there's there's liability on the uh, on the on the software that screws up but there should be on the driver as well and this is a really odd thing to come out with well it depends on how we view self-driving. If I'm in a, I mean, especially because, you know, the auto industry is pitching level five self-driving is something that won't even have a steering wheel, right? We're all just hanging out, eating popcorn. Then you're not liable. Don't have the Clearly right. not liable. Like right. upload on Amazon. Right. But, Agreed. So I, I feel like, and people are people. And this is why Tesla I have so much ire for them for the way they've pitched autopilot because people, if you if you give them the opportunity not to pay attention, that's the not concern. Gonna pay attention. They're going to take it. Do, so, do we say that's okay, or do we say no? No, you're, it's you're not still okay. responsible. That's why that guy should be charged. He was. That's why the Brits it, are saying it, the Brits are saying it is unrealistic to expect someone who is not paying attention to the road to deal with, for example, a tire blowout. T y r e. I love it when they do that. So pay or attention. <laughs> So, so Stacy. But what they're saying is, they're saying for they're they're putting this realistic. there because then the automotive people have to be much more realistic about what they're promising. I think. Here's if they're what, saying, look, the blame is not going to be on consumers. It's going to be on you guys. Then they can't go to the consumers and sell them something that isn't actually. Okay. I think on the here's, sales here's side, what, right. the market Here's what, Pete, right. here's what Pete Buttigieg says. He's the secretary of transportation. He told The Verge this. I keep saying this until I'm blue in the face. Anything on the market today that you can buy is a driver assistance technology, not a driver replacement technology. I don't care what it's called. We need to make sure that we're crystal clear about that, even if companies are not. And actually, this is part of an article from The Verge talking about how the self-driving -car, car industry is abandoning the term 
self-driving. They don't want to use it anymore. Waymo, well, Ford, reason, Lyft, yeah. Uber, and Volvo uh, are are saying well, we're not going to use. They the problem is Tesla's going to keep using it, and and there's some there's some concern that Tesla they'll kind of let Tesla own that market, even if it's just a marketing term. But if Tesla is legally liable, then they might start. Maybe they they'll would. either stop yeah. selling it that way or they'll actually deliver real high quality stuff because they don't want to be. And they can't right now because it's not. It's really up to. And I'm trying to remember if it's the NTSB or NHTSA, but it's up to whatever that the federal. <laughs> there is one of those two federal agencies. I think it's NHTSA that says what is full self-driving what's not it's up to them to say that you can't use that term they could do that by the way but federal regulation doesn't well, but that's like law. level that's five that's not like normal language that so like level five is us sitting in our car as a living room level four is everything up to level four is driver assist but there's no such but, thing as level five right now right and so to and call so, it level five and apply well, full self-driving is level five but Tesla doesn't call it level five. They call it autopilot. No, and they call, no. They call it five. full self-driving, FSD. That's what they're selling. Okay, today. yeah, but that's, but they don't call it quote unquote level five, which is the actual words. Okay, but doesn't full self-driving imply yeah, level if, five? If, it, if, it's, if it's synonymous. Well, I would argue that, but well, a lawyer you know, can get away saying, right. I mean, that's, that's the issue. So you've got to really, is there something? like, Waymo, several years ago, this is from the Verge article, Waymo considered developing an advanced driver assist system like Tesla's full self-driving version of autopilot, but ultimately decided against it, having become alarmed by the negative effects on the driver. Drivers would zone out yeah. or fall asleep at the wheel. Is there something in the bill of sales that's, that's like fine print that says, hey, you still need to be alert oh, yeah. when engage in these? If, then well, they, they used said to, it. They have, do they still... Do they still have the thing on the, the drivers so you have to touch the steering wheel every so, now and then? Is that still a thing? This is what's yeah, really I interesting. That. I can't remember what – somebody in the chat room will tell us. Um, we don't you, we don't have FS3 uh, Teslas, but uh, on the autopilot, yeah, you had to torque the wheel a little bit. Ford, GM, and others are coming out with their new self-driving where you don't have to have your hands on the wheel. But in all those cases, there's a camera – that's watching mm -hmm. your eyes to see that you're paying attention that you're there. Oh. And I don't believe Tesla's doing that, so I'm not sure how Tesla's verifying that the driver's there. Yep. Um, Let's say they're not doing I think that. That's a even in the sign of the contract, that you you allegedly read your contract, and it says, hey, once I engage this, I am responsible for paying Oh, they attention. pop up things on the, they you know, they tell you. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's enough to put it in the contract or the or the owner's manual you got to pop it up on the and screen I, but they can do that this gets this gets to a problem we have which is we're making driving more boring by doing this this little mid-level where like i highway driving is relaxed with like a tesla and highway i've, I've rented cars that yeah. have this and it's fine but like yeah as a person who I need to be like really stimulated when i'm doing anything to keep paying attention to it so it is a real problem for me to actually zone out. It's it's much easier for me to zone out if I'm not, if, if I'm in a half self-driving thing. So I get it. I think it's a really dangerous mm -hmm. time to be driving cars. Here's what, these features. here's what Tesla says right now. Autopilot and full self-driving capability are intended for use with a fully attentive driver who has their hands on the wheel and is prepared to take over at any moment. Uh, while these features are designed to become more capable over time, the currently enabled features do not make the vehicle autonomous. So, but they. So that documentation doesn't cover them legally from from a liability standpoint. I don't know. It's not in the UK. <laughs> I mean, it says See, it what, right there. If you're ever going to want to regulate technology, this is the one to regulate. This is the one to, to set guidelines into about. people. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, I'm amazed. I, I I don't know if you have to touch the wheel or not. Um. Does anybody have a FSD Tesla in the chat room? I'm curious. I I get the sense that you do, but uh, but I don't know. I guess no nobody we know has I'm not an FSD. Any answers. Yeah, nobody we know has an FSD. Redcon Five has it in the Discord. Oh, does he? Yeah, take a look. Nobody yeah. trusts Redcon. Yeah, here he is driving his car. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the automated driving. <laughs> 
conditions. Nobody trusts Rick Conn. <laughs> There's the system right there. Right there. That's Dog tired. Good night. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I would hope there's some sort of mechanism. There is in the GM and Ford, Ford's uh, uh, Blue Cruise and GM's uh, something cruise. There, there, there's a camera. Yeah, a I would hope that too, but I'm just thinking about our legal system and loopholes and all of that stuff. And if Tesla can just put something in writing just like that that says, hey, make sure you're doing the right thing when you're right. engaged in this. We warned you. Out, out of sync says Tesla uses the interior camera for FSD beta to watch the drivers and will turn off FSD if they catch you not paying attention. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they have to catch you. Oh, well, there you go. You have to earn FSD, at, at least right now. You have to have a good driving record. You know, you have to drive perfectly mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Um, you know, and the other thing is both GM and Ford will only, they won't do it on city streets. They'll only do it on streets they've mapped out, highways. Yeah. They're, How do you know then? Does it does it like a little light come on saying you can use it now or it goes off you yeah. can't? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. You know what's fascinating? I'm just gonna throw this out here because it was in one of the short stories that I read in that book that I read about like AI in the future. Yeah. Um there and this actually does happen already with automated ferries. So <laughs> we'll throw that out there too. One of the premises was that for self-driving vehicles, when they hit weird situations, they automatically go to a remote person driver. So like a remote right. drone driver, right? Yeah, yeah. We talked about so, that, right? Did we? Oh no, yeah, that was on so Twitch. That was the one oh. where where it's like a video game. And yeah. So yeah. It, it was kind of like yeah, the kids, in some cases, it was actual kids doing a video game. So the the car had the ability to recognize when it no longer could handle a situation, it would flip over to a remote control operator. So then the person driving the car still doesn't have to pay attention, but we don't have to plan for every externality, which would be impossible. Yeah, this is, hey, this is they showed this as CES, the Halo, H-A-L-O, uh, self-driving car. Uh, and and if the halo gets confused, like I don't know what's going on, a, a remote driver can uh, take over, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, we talked about that on Twit. Halo dot car, the electric car that drives to you, but there's a human driving it. <laughs> and there's a company called Einride that's doing it for trucks in Norway, and then there's another company mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. doing some ferries up there yeah. where. Everything's remote controlled until it isn't, and then it's. But see, it, I like told you I could make a living playing games. video games. I told you, <laughs> Mom. What do you think of this? WBEZ in Chicago Public Radio. We were taught. You said about four. What is it? Five or six percent of people who listen to about public. Six to twelve. Six to twelve. Well, that's pay. a lot. Pay. Six to twelve, depending on the station. That never was enough for them to be rich. But you know what changed that? Podcasting. Because they could sell ads on podcasts. And and public broadcasting ads on podcasts are very, very, much more expensive than Twit. They're very, very expensive. Really? Oh, really? God, yeah. And their minimums are huge. And, uh, and, and, they're, and, and rem I don't know if you remember this, but in the days of, of public broadcasting, you couldn't have a call to action. The, right. The, the, when you were buying it, you were supporting public broadcasting. You know, this... This broadcast of Downton Abbey is brought to you by Archer Daniels Midland, making the world safe for, mm -hmm. you know... We, we, we like quality Brits, production. too. Yeah. yeah. But it never could say, call 1-800-ARCHER-DANIELS-MIDLAND. But that all changed with podcasts. And you'll note, all of the public radio broadcasts, podcasts have lots of ads in them. So suddenly, I think they're flush with cash. So that's, that's the lead-up to this. WBEZ just bought the Chicago Sun Times. Oh, so I obviously I'm the one who put this in the rundown, and it so happens last night I talked to Matt Moog, as in Moog Synthesizer, who is the CEO of WBEZ, and so now he's in charge of a newspaper. We had a fascinating conversation about all this. Now that's and, a no and, cash deal, right? Right. So right. it's not and they're fat. Ahead. It's not their fat wallet that's buying this. But what are they giving? No, no, them? no, no. no. Um, well, it's going to keep the Sun-Times alive. The Sun-Times, they, they, they wanted to stop the Sun-Times from being bought by one of the evil players, and kind of the employees did that. And this like is, a, this is a safe home for it. <laughs> well, Tronk across the street, my old stomping grounds, the Tribune, is now owned by Alden, which is the worst hedge fund. And by full disclosure, I used to be an advisor to Digital First, which was also owned by Alden, and um, uh, left long ago. 
And so Tribune is pretty much hated now. So there's a op fascinating opportunity now. So I'm wrong in this saying that this is, a, this is a, a sign of the times that these public broadcasting is now so flush they're buying newspapers. They no, didn't buy no. it. They didn't buy it. They, they didn't just buy took it. it over. They're going to run. They have a large newsroom. It's twice the size of Tribune. So I apologize, so BEZ. I apologize. And, well, BEZ does, does really good stuff, and they make a lot of money from podcasts. Right. Um, this American Life being primary there. Right. But, but the point is, the opportunity is to undercut Tribune and to create a free news equality ecosystem across Chicagoland, as we, we Chicagoans call it. Um mm -hmm. And and undercut the Tribune and undercut Alden. So it's going to be fascinating to watch in this one to one city. And you know, I, I bit I, I broke. What do you so you, you you bite your teeth? No. What do you do when you learn something? You you, you bit your tongue. No, I didn't no. do that. That's cut when you don't teeth. comment. Cut teeth. I I cut my teeth. I cut <laughs> oh. my teeth. In, in Chicago journalism, I worked for Chicago Today, the paper that had no tomorrow, uh, owned by Chicago Tribune. And when I was there, there were four papers, Chicago Daily News, Sun-Times, Tribune Today. And now it's two, and it's going to be a newspaper war of a whole new The Sun-Times was storied. That's Annie Anako worked there, so did Roger Ebert. It was a storied newspaper. Yes. Um, but hard times, I remember they fired their entire photography staff. Photography it's, staff, yep. Yeah, it said, yeah. Murdoch said owned it for a while. Yeah. Told them all uh, to use their smartphones. Is that? Yeah. Is that just how yeah, they said oh, those were before the smartphones even. Oh, it was even, it okay. Was, it was, they were equipping reporters who were pretty stupid about cameras, because I'm, I'm one of them, uh, with cameras <laughs> to go out and, and oh, shoot their own stuff. Sad. Like the yeah. one... Uh, one man band, so called in in TV, the where predator the they call that. The by the car the other day was because she was host, her producer, her camera person, or everything. Um, so yes, yeah, it's it's it's, it's going to be really interesting to watch. She's okay, uh, right? What? Yeah, she was okay. Yes, she's fine. But I didn't realize that was because she had to do it all. Yeah, she she set up the camera. She That's did everything. So yep. sad. I see yeah. that all the time, and I go, I'm, I'm so sorry you had to work in media after, in this these. Tough times. No. Um, Philadelphia uh, Inquirer was donated to a nonprofit by its owner in 2016. Salt Lake Tribune announced plans to become a nonprofit in 2019. So this the is the problem a trend. with journalists, though, is they think, "Oh, good, we're not for profit now. We can, well, we have no problems." No, uh, every person I know who runs a not-for-profit, um, uh, Matt Moog at WBEZ, his predecessor Goli Sheikh Al Islami, who just left WNYC. Uh, these people are the smartest business people around because they've got to do it under more difficult circumstances and they've got to become sustainable. So you can't just say, ah, who cares about capitalism? Uh -uh. No, well, you have to pay the bills. You have to run the presses. Yeah. Somebody's got to buy the paper and the ink. Well, uh, or, well, actually not that. My recommendation would stop doing that as soon as Someone has to pay the journalist to go out and hunt stories. Oh, that. Mm. Yes. We have to eat too. The Chicago Sun Times is is a <laughs> dollar in the city, two dollars in the burbs. <laughs> That's weird. I know. The it hardest is. working paper in America. That's, it's kind of a weird. Maybe it's more thing. expensive because you have to pay for distribute. distribute yeah, yeah, they have to drive a truck out there. <laughs> Uh, that's fascinating. So I, I didn't realize it was, I just thought, oh, they just had a lot of extra money. And they thought, nope. what can we do no, with no, this no, American no. life money? It's a rescue thing. Good. Yeah. Good. And I think that's a good thing. I mean, it's not the end of the line by any means. You still have to make it work. Uh, There's a couple of Spotify stories that are interesting. Yeah. Spotify mm -hmm. in a lot of trouble because uh, their $100 million golden boy, Joe Rogan, keeps putting people on who say like Eric Clapton who says you're being hypnotized into taking the vaccine um, and so there's a lot of heat to it. Ask them about the vaccine so this is, he gets these people on that, you know, Eric Clapton maybe you don't ask Eric Clapton knowing his views. No, no, the guy he brought on that's controversial was December 31st is the doctor who who claims he invented the N oh, mRNA the vaccine, who is yeah. saying you're okay. being hypnotized with subliminal <laughs> messages. Clapton must have heard that episode. <laughs> That's what. It, so Clapton is one of the people influenced by Joe Rogan. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Yes. I was like, I was like, he could just not ask them about that. No, no, no. He wants to. No, that's and in fact, Neil Young, who is pro-vax, has asked Spotify to remove his music. And Spotify just announced they would. Wow. So they made a choice. They called his bluff. No, no, no. They called Rogan. his bluff. No. I they called his bluff. They said, sure, yeah. Neil, you don't want the money? Fine. 
Yeah, I think that's what it was more of. Uh, yeah, sure, that's one less check for us to sign. 270 sure. well, uh, they, physicians they wrote. They have all that data. So it's not like Spotify is like, I mean, if Taylor Swift said she, if Taylor Swift had said this, they may have changed. I like that idea. That's a different a story. Yeah. Come on, Tay-Tay. It's up, it's, <laughs> ball's in your court now. Up to you. Yeah. Uh, 270 Amos. doctors, physicians, and science educator, edu educators. I like that. Educators. Uh, signed an open letter calling on Spotify. <laughs> You're an educated man. I I'm can educated. Tell. Open letters calling on Spotify to um, take action against misinformation. Um, this interview with a doctor, and I put that in quotes, um, named um, Malone, Robert Malone. He's a virologist, says, I'm one of the architects of mRNA, and you are being hypnotized. Um, yeah, I think Joe says, I'm a comedian. This is entertainment. It's the same thing handed. No, says. no, but he's not. He's not doing. He's doing. He's doing it seriously. He knows he's influencing people. Well, he's a troll. A lot of people he's... under 30, including my son, are big fans and probably do believe this when they hear it. Uh, we know. <laughs> Uh, the Green Bay uh, Packers quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Be believed the vaccine information he got from Joe Rogan and parroted it back. Apparently so does uh, Eric Clapton and, and millions of other young men. So I understand, uh, you know, why they're upset by this. On the other hand, it's... Uh, didn't we talk about this last week or maybe we did on Twit? That's the problem. I confused the two. Uh, I mean, Spotify... It's going to say, well, it's free speech. Rogan can say what he wants, right? How responsible uh, no, are they this, for we, we did talk about this last week. Yeah. But Spotify hired him and pays him. And so Spot, yeah, where I, I normally thought. say that, that that Facebook is not a medium, Spotify is. Yeah. Uh, April 23rd, 2021. He, Rogan said, if you're like 21 years old and you say to me, should I get vaccinated? I'll go, no. He also promoted ivermectin, the dewormer as a uh, treatment. I remember the ivermectin controversy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I, you know, I don't know what's, so Spotify said, okay, bye, Neil. That's interesting. I didn't see that they had agreed. Uh, Neil Young said, you can have Joe Rogan or Neil Young. You can't have both. You might find also this interesting down, down all the way down to line 137. I found this slightly interesting. A list of podcasts that Spotify trumpeted yeah. heavily that haven't been heard of since. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Spotify just emailed me again asking for information on my podcast. Good for you. Feature it or something. Wow. Well, no, I, it was weird just because Spotify and Amazon Music both came at me on the same day. Right. And I was like, what's happening? But you're, you're right already now? on both. I'm sure we are. I mean, every, any, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're on any platform that takes RSS feeds. We'd, uh, that's not an endorsement of Spotify. Should we say, no, you can't have our, you can't have Neil Young and you can't have Twit? No. Oh, no, no. I just, I, I think it's interesting that they're pushing, that they've clearly, here's, I don't want to say here's scraping the, the bottom of the barrel because I'm not the bottom of the barrel. They're, they're <laughs> no, clearly you're not. No, you're, but you're, you're, you're not no, Megan and Harry. Either. Let's put it that way. You're right. not. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Megan and Harry signed a multi-million dollar um, pound, sorry, deal with Spotify in December of 2020. They did one show. And that's it. <laughs> Kim Kardashian West announced a Spotify pod, pod, podcast. <laughs> you're, you're the professional, right? Did, did you take podcast. the good drugs, Leo? Yeah. June 2020. Uh, in March 2021, she hinted she was ready to release her episodes. <laughs> Nothing. This is from Pod News. Podnews.net. Yeah. Anna DuVernay's Array signed an agreement to produce a scripted and unscripted podcast January 2021. Stay tuned, yet to be released. Warner Brothers in D.C. signed a deal with Spotify for a set of original podcasts June 2020. Batman Unburied announced casting June 2021. No show. It takes a long time to make a podcast. I will be the first to tell you. This show, which uh -huh. we are recording in 2022, won't be out for three or four years. <laughs> mm. We've got so much work. Post-production. A lot of, there's a whole bunch of them. Wow. Isn't that funny? Mark and Jay Duplass. of dollars. Um, did they pay all these people or did they just make an announcement? I would hope they had better lawyers than that. 
Yeah. I, maybe they did an advance. And so if they didn't. Do well, the interesting thing is Spotify's uh, stock value went up when Megan and Harry announced uh, $836 million. So they're getting the benefit of this. I didn't know. This is what Chernin signed a deal <clears throat> in September 2020, promising more than 250 shows to transform into podcasts. Yeah. They've yet to release any shows. No shows. Um, the Russo Brothers. I, I hope they get only numbers in the building. Is, though. Oh, wait, wait. Variety just published a story saying Gimlet Studio is hiring in house producers for Harry and Meghan Markle's weekly podcast. Oh. Um, so, so we'll hear about no it. No shows. In Q4. So basically, they're like, Clearly, we can't rely on them to do this. We and of must course, hire more Gimlet is owned them. by uh, Spotify. We should point out. Speaking of podcasts, so if you, you watch, want to produce um, it, they're looking for two producers mm. for a six-month oh. contract pos position. Six-month contract. <laughs> Doesn't sound very promising. Yeah, I know. I'm like, oh. We'll see how it goes. Did you watch Only Murders in the Building? I have watched it, yes. Yeah, it was very good, wasn't it? Started it's fun. It. Yeah, I didn't finish it. Wait, don't spoil it. I might come back to Don't it. tell Steve. I, it's it, fun. It's okay. It's fine. It's fun. It was about podcasting, which I like. That's liked. what I'm saying. It's about yeah, podcasts. It's about on Hulu, folks. crime, true crime podcasts. Mm -hmm. A lot of good podcasts. Are they podcasts still, by the way, that was the all the rage last year, true crime. Is that still a thing? I don't know. Yes, true crime. Everyone no. still loves true crime. All the people nope. we talked to said, "What? Wait, where's your true crime show? I said, we're a tech network. We don't have... You're right. <laughs> we don't There's have. some crazy oh, crimes Facebook's in the a crime. tech world. No, actually, I, came, I literally angle. came up with a treatment for a true crime podcast we could produce that is right down our alley. Wow. But then I thought, I'm not going to pander to these bozos, so I didn't do it. Was it the Broadcom <laughs> Sex Dungeon? No, but no. that's intriguing. <laughs> No, it he was uses uh, dungeon sounds. It was about, and I, I kind of almost don't want to even talk about it. Adrian Lamo, who was a hacker. Know him? I knew him pretty well in the day. He was autistic. He was a kind of a genius hacker. Died. Uh, was uh, I think it was uh, ruled a suicide, but there were some very suspicious circumstances around it, including the fact that he had taped onto his thigh a phone number and a name. There were some very suspicious circumstances. So I thought that'd be a good true crime podcast. Who killed yeah. Adrian Lama? And it's right up our alley. We could talk about his hacking skills and, yeah. and all that. So there, I just gave it away. Somebody should. Harry, Megan, somebody's got Megan it and now. Harry should do it. It'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Is that 256 encryption? Can you imagine that, <laughs> that conversation? <laughs> There's, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't know. Uh, we are going to cover, uh, Jason Howell has told me he will get up at 7 in the morning, because that's when it is, Pacific Bless Time, February 9th, the launch of the Galaxy S22, Samsung Unpacked, or whatever they call it, Samsung un something. Unpacked. Unpacked? Is it unpacked again? Yeah. Yes, sir. S22, 22 Plus, Galaxy S22 Ultra. It's interesting in the, um, yeah, Galaxy Unpacked, the Epic Standard. Yes. Then in the, one of the announcements, they said it's a notable product announcement. And of course, they are killing the note. So we think this will be a note like phone, maybe with a stylus and all that. Uh -huh. oh. 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 It's like eight minutes later, Stacey's like, oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> And uh, the, uh, um, hey, community. did y'all see what's the what's the deal? Because I I read some rumors about Google doing a foldable phone, and you know how I'm obsessed. Yes, with we've been reading phones. these rumors for a long time. Yep. Have uh, we? But is there anything no, new? Did, no, I thought I well, saw something new. So yeah, there was a rumor that they might announce it this year, along with a six A, maybe at the same time. But that's just rumor. I think somebody saw okay. something in an FCC database. I think that's what kind of led to uh, prompted yeah. it. All right. Yeah. I think um, I mentioned it in the rundown I produced a couple of weeks ago, and we skipped it. Oh, because <laughs> it was that interesting. It's because I wasn't here to be obsessed about the phones. See, I, there's yeah. always it so much good stuff in the rundown. I don't get to it all. I try, but I don't. North Korea. There's so much good stuff in the rundown. Yeah, and we always talk about Facebook. I haven't yet. You know, we haven't talked about Facebook in a week. Have you noticed that? Oh, oh, have you noticed today. that that I am being influenced by somebody? No, no, that's not true. That's not fair. It's not true. There's just not much story there. It's, they're kind of boring now. North Korean internet we do have taken down by cyber attackers. 
DDoSed right after their missile launch. All of a sudden, the internet went down for six hours Wednesday morning. Um, it came a day after North Korea conducted its fifth missile test. Not sure if it's related. Hackers also took the Belarusian railway system offline in an attempt to slow down the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And they said it. They admitted it. Yep. We, uh, we, 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 we infected them with ransomware to slow them down. This is a new kind of activist hacking. May I call this it is, This activism? is armies without countries. Yeah. yeah. Without, um, without gunpowder. Yeah. Very interesting. And good guys and bad guys both, don't we know from our election hacking and all that? Seoul-based NK Pro, a news site that monitors North Korea, reported that log files and network records showed websites on North Korean web domains largely unreachable because North Korea's DNS system stopped communicating the routes the packets should take. A DDoS attack. Um, that is... Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised. I've I've thought this for years. In fact, I gave an interview like 15 years ago saying hackers are going to be the next, you know, front line of cyber warfare because they've got the skills and either nation states will use them as they are or they will act on their own as groups like Anonymous have done. I think it's You clearly did not read my book pick from several episodes ago. And Elaine and no this is how they no autonomous. No, this is and this is how they tell me the world ends by Nicole Perla. Oh, that was literally what it was. That all was about. a good book. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh no, no, I did read it, Stacey. I'm just parroting her point of view. Um manufacturers have less than five days supply of some computer chips, according to the US Department of Commerce. Uh, this just-in-time thing is not working out so well. Wafer-thin <laughs> inventories leave factories vulnerable to shutdowns if chip deliveries are interrupted by anything like weather or COVID-19. And I've also seen that, that, that production seems to be back up on chips. Is that well, what you're hearing? what's happening is they're building fabs like crazy. Intel's got a big one, $20 billion fab they're building in Ohio. TSMC's building in Arizona. Uh, but the problem is it takes a while, like a year or two, to build a fab. So according to the Commerce Department... There's another problem. Yes. So the second problem is not only do they take a long time to come online, but a lot People of the power? shortages aren't on the most advanced chips, which is what these fabs are going to make. The legacy nodes, so, right? Yeah, they're not even yeah. solving that problem. So, I did this, so if y'all care about this, I'm just going to pitch. I'm sorry. Tomorrow's so, show, we talk for like 15 minutes about it. Oh, good. Go ahead. Oh, good. No, that's a great pitch for uh, the IoT show with Stacy and uh, Kevin. Um, survey respondents to the Washington Post said they didn't see shortages going away in the next six months. Some say it could last into well into 2023. Yeah, and the, so the Commerce Department is also they. So some of this is a little self-serving. I. I know. Surprise. Politics, self-serving. Um, there's <laughs> the Biden administration is pushing the uh, CHIPS Act, which is a fifty two billion dollar allocation for funds for chip development to happen here in the U.S. And so that's part of what they're doing. Some of this like. Some chip inventories like it historically, they they have kept pretty limited inventories because the supply chains haven't been messed up. So in some ways, this is not a story. Um, and the solutions that we're proposing aren't quite the best solutions, um, simply because, like I said, we don't need new fabs. I mean, yes, we do need new fabs, but what we really need are more transparent supply chains. And what we're undergoing is a, a shift in the way the supply chain for chips is going to be managed, I guess, is the way to think about it. So instead of just like going to the store and being like, oh, I want all these chips. Now we're having to like order our chips in advance. Does that make sense? Yeah. Did, I was like, did y'all go away? Oh my God. <laughs> what, what, what were you this saying? happens all the time at parties when no. I talk about semiconductors. What, what'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> People just leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, gee, do you need another drink? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Oh, sorry. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, don't, 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 don't keep your spot. Keep your space. Uh, don't, don't, don't change. <laughs> I should do a change log. Well, uh, uh, can I? Can I do a tease? Can I do a tease? Tease before the change log. Yeah. When we come back from the change log. Yes. 
and probably a commercial too. Yes. You could wait this long. Yes. We're going to find a musical yes. that Ant actually likes. No. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for the it's Google it on Change Log. Change Log. <laughs> <laughs> you no longer have to say "Hey Goog" to get the assistant to shut up. This is an old story. I don't know why this I don't just know why. discovered this. Because uh, I think that they did a they just did a blog post. Say I almost put it in. I said no, this is old. They did a blog post that says, by the way, remind people, hey, you can do that. And I've then been saying the stop said, forever. That's new. No, it's not. You can just, no, it's when not the new. alarm's going off or a timer's going off, you just say stop. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, ah, wait, I see the difference. Google oh, smart what? home devices have had a version <laughs> of this feature for years. Oh, no, no. This is The Verge just not using this thing because, no. <laughs> You've always been able to say stop. You know what? Yeah. A lot of people mm. don't know all the features, so there's always an audience for yeah. when you discover something to be like, That's so hey, nice of you, guys, Stacey. I just discovered this. It's, uh, it's, it's so true. Nice. That's the problem with the change log is uh, sometimes uh, it's not really a change. <clears throat> there's no change. Pixel's big at Google's a Google's done. It's finished. There's no new Google. It's over. It's not going to change anymore. It's over. Rename yep. this. To it is what it is. Okay, the stopped worked for timers. Scooter X says it is new. Because now it works for other things. Okay. It's still really a boring story. It always worked for alarms. <laughs> Not always, but it's been working for a while because I've been oh, shouting at my... So like when I ask Google, like, tell me about Abraham Lincoln. And Google's say, like, stop. Abraham Lincoln was born and, right. like, and you're like, okay, If you're stop. bored, stop. Yeah. You can, for weather. Okay. That's the biggest difference is it, stop has been expanded to stop it in more situations. Okay. <laughs> and they've been rolling this out on the Pixel 6 with uh, quick phrases. Um, quick phrases let you do certain things without saying, hey, you know who. The feature that's rolled out, according to The Verge, on Google smart home devices is in a universal stop making noise command for your smart speaker. You still have to say, hey, Google, if you want to stop a song. You can't just okay. shout stop. Okay. All right. Would so, stop already work better? If I, you were... I like stop. What? I, you know, Lisa swears at it. In fact, she says, the, and she wasn't able to demonstrate it for me, so it might have been a one-off, but she swore at the Google, and the Google said, that's not nice, and you shouldn't swear at me, <laughs> at which point she, said, she swore She's... even louder, and it said, do you want to file a report? And she said, yes, I do. And she said, I want to tell you guys back at Google, it's a machine. It's okay to yell at it. <laughs> you don't good have to be day, polite. Sir. No, you, good day, sir. You agree with that, right? You don't have to be polite to a virtual assistant. It's just a. I am polite the to my virtual assistant. The ASPCC is because, coming after her. Uh, You're polite? No, no, Why? no. I. Well, I, you don't I'm because I'm polite in and normal. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. practice. Yeah, I'm polite perfect. to normal people. Yeah, yeah. So, so be polite to your robot. Well, basically, if I'm talking, and, and I've yelled at Madam A, I, I, and sometimes I yell at Google when it goes on and on. So stop is very helpful. But yeah, yeah in general, John says like if a, I'm he's defaulting, a person, yeah, just yeah, you don't have to I'm think like, about it. I'm talking to somebody. Yeah, I'm a nice person. I'm nice to my little bots. But if you know what, if you I'm say, I'm not going to donate my kidney or anything. No, and if you say F you, yeah. it's not the end of the world either. So don't, don't, no, don't no, give me when a hard I mean, time, Google. Right. Big Pixel's big at a glance upgrade. Are we still talking about the Pixel 6? Good <laughs> Lord. Starts rolling out with more Google clock and fitness integrations. Okay. Ooh, wish fitness integrations. Your assistant shows you what you need right when you need it on your home screen and lock screen. Bedtime. Your upcoming bedtime, timer and stopwatch info from clock, activity info from your fitness app. So go into your uh, at a glance settings and you'll see at least three new settings. Um, Google could should be adding several more capabilities to at a glance. Add a store, shopping lists and Google Pay rewards cards. Connected devices, connection status, and battery info for your Bluetooth devices. Apple does that nicely with their AirPods. Doorbells shows you, oh, I will like that when I can see who's at the door. I think we talked about that last week. Flashlight. This is good. Do you really need a reminder when your flashlight is on? <laughs> I guess uh, you actually, might. Um, do. Turn yes. it off. Yeah. Yes, it off. actually. Yeah. yeah. 
and a safety check countdown from the personal safety app. So get ready. Look at this. Oh, here's here's a QR code with your flight information on the at a glance. That's kind of neat. So nine to five Google says more coming. Check your at a glance settings. Google chat. Yes, there is such a thing. Adds rich text formatting on the web rolling out now. Who uses Google Chat? Oh, just somebody. Suite, I use Google correct? Chat. Do you? Oh, well, you just like the that. G Suite um, people, right? You can make a bold, it's G Suite. bold word or an italic word or underline it or that kind of thing. That's cool. Oh, wow. That'll be, everyone will get it in the next 15 days. Turned on by default with no opt-out settings for admins. So stick it. YouTube Music will soon work for supervised kid accounts enrolled with the Family Link. Do you use Family Link, Stacy? No, probably not. Uh, Kids under thirteen. Use YouTube Music. <laughs> yeah, Google. we don't use YouTube Music. Ah, so this was a feature that Google Play Music had. If you were under thirteen, you could have your own library. Now YouTube Music will be adding this. No, we just have to not bad. Yeah, no. and that's. The Google Change login. Um, anything else before we get to our picks of the week? We're uh, we're getting on. Did you see Mark Cuban? I don't know how long he's going to stay with this because he doesn't tend to stay with things. He's a drug it's, thing. It's yeah. He's he started his own online pharmacy pharmacy thing where you just thing. he's charging basically <laughs> for generic drugs a penny or two above the cost. I think he's going to have trouble with the name, the Cost Plus Drug Company. There is a business called Cost Plus, but okay. Oh, um, but it's the world cute. market. Well, yeah, but it is a market. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I, I looked it up, but there's no insulin, which would be a real benefit to the world. Yeah. Some of, some of the, and, yeah, because, and the price differentials aren't that great in most of what I looked at. Oh, well, okay. Here's so one. So it's 15% above generics plus the price of shipping and it may not be that the price is much greater in many cases because like a lot of like walgreens and uh many of the supermarket chains as part of their like pharmacy efforts they've been doing what he's doing basically they've just been doing it for their pharmacy. yes right okay yes. go on right so yeah so i don't know i mean He's he's making it like I a crusade, every... not like a business. Like I'm gonna, he said, I'm not gonna right. make any well, money at this. Yeah. I'm just, uh, I'm just a I'm good saving person the saving the world. Yeah. You know what? More power to him. It drives people to think about this issue. Yeah. There yeah. are a couple drugs that are actually like one of my mom's drugs is actually like fifty dollars cheaper per month, which is really, I mean, that's great for her. That's like going out to dinner. So, but so. so I, I understand if you don't have uh, insurance that covers this stuff, then it can be very expensive. Does mm -hmm. your mom not have insurance, or is it cheaper for her insurance. to buy it out, like sometimes out of pocket? Sometimes it's expensive with insurance. Some of the, yes, yeah, some, so sometimes, yeah, it's, cheaper sometimes it's cheaper to buy it out of pocket. Okay, and it's also just easier in some cases. Like sometimes insurance doesn't pay for certain drugs. Right. Want. Yeah. Right. Okay. Insurance can be a pain. interesting. Interesting. Uh, you, let do you us, want to laugh at Facebook? You want to laugh at Facebook? Uh, you want to do no, a Facebook story? No, we want to end the story? show. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, the meta, the meta no ad Facebook. for Horizon. The meta ad is pretty funny, I thought. For Horizon? Horizon. Not meta has built an AI supercomputer or no, meta no, is killing line DM? Line 48. No. You know, we do have a Facebook section. Takes. Here it is. The meta <laughs> ad for... Well, you started the quick takes. It's very confusing to know where to put this. This is what is Horizon. So we know. Oh, I've that's we, their, that's we their, saw this yeah. ad when this came oh, we did? out okay, never ages mind. ago. We did. Yeah. No legs. No legs. What is it with no legs? No, no legs. First week. I think the more modern versions of this have legs, don't they? The one uh, Mark showed us had legs. I don't think this whole idea has legs. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Kristen really? Bell, is but it? I gave you something old. It's a fake Kristen Bell. Is it Kristen Bell? Yeah, this is offensive on so many levels. Let's go to the end of the show. Okay. <laughs> Stacy's offended. If we're not going to talk about Facebook's supercomputing, I'm not here for it. Well, you can talk about that if you'd like, Why are they building a supercomputer? They're building the world's fastest <laughs> computer <laughs> you brought for it up, AI. Stacey. Why are they doing that? Why? 
Your fault, Stacey. Why, Stacey? Why? <laughs> we'll be right back with more in just a little bit. Our show today brought to you by Compiler. It's a podcast, original podcast from Red Hat. Discusses tech topics, big, small, and yeah, well, I'll admit it, a little bit weird, a little bit strange. You, uh, you may be familiar uh, with uh, Red Hat's other podcast, Command Line Heroes, another of our sponsors, which we love. This one, hosted by Angela Andrews and Brent Simino, is, I think, a brilliant idea for a podcast. And I say that because I'm very jealous that they thought of it first. What, they, what they've done is they've actually started to look at the things that Red Hatters are asking in their, you know, messaging uh, platform, or whatever it is that they use, probably Slack or something like that. It's questions that they go... That's interesting. What do you think? Technology can be big, bold, bizarre, complicated. Compiler unravels industry topics, trends, and the things you've always wanted to know about tech through interviews with people who know it best. On the show, you'll hear a chorus of perspectives from diverse communities beyond the code. Uh, Red Hatters tackling big questions like what is technical debt? What are tech hiring managers actually looking for? which I thought was quite interesting. Episode two, what can video games teach us about edge computing? The internet is a patchwork of international agreements and varying infrastructure, but there's something coming to change the way we connect. In this episode of Compiler, hosts explore what edge computing could mean for people who enjoy video games and what this form of entertainment could teach us about the technology. Episode nine, are tech hubs changing? You know, Usually you go to Silicon Valley, right, or, or San Francisco if you want to get a career in tech, but that's definitely starting to change. The hosts of Compiler speak to a few of the change makers who are thinking outside of the physical and social dimensions we've come to associate with innovation. You may not need legs in the future, right? To learn, <laughs> to learn more about Compiler, just go to red.ht slash twit. That's their uh, URL shortener, red.ht slash twit. Twit. It's really uh, well produced. I love it that it has a variety of voices talking about the topic. Not all in agreement. It's a very nice kind of survey. New episodes just came out. You can download them at any time. So if you've heard the early episodes as I have, maybe it's time to go back and listen to some of the newer ones. Uh, listen to Compiler on Apple Podcasts or anywhere you listen to your podcasts. And I will put a link on the show's uh, notes page there so you can click that as well at twit.tv. We thank Compiler for their support. It's nice when one podcast can help Another podcast along. Uh, learn more at red.ht slash twit. You can listen there as well. And we'll put a link to the latest episode up on the show notes. Thank you, Red Hat. Thank you, Compiler. Welcome to the family of, uh, of podcasters. Oh, here's the picture of Elizabeth from Knoxville uh, holding an onion in her, in her cloth. While she was claiming <laughs> to have been maced. I was maced. Oh, I was maced. Yeah. Can we just mention the keyboard scarf, which... I like the scarf, Elizabeth. Yeah. Nice oh. choice. She, she, it's kind of funny. She, she looks at the onion, dabs her... Uh, the other way, there, you can see it in the towel. Dabs her eye with it. <laughs> then says, I was maced. <laughs> <laughs> with onions. Onions. Uh, but you know what? Onions she, a it, cure for to being be maced. honestly honest, even if she was maced while storming the Capitol, I don't think that deserves uh, it. I don't think that's such a bad thing. <laughs> Could have been shot yeah. for violating I mean, the law. You're, you're breaking into the federal building. If you, if you were if you were a black man, you'd be shot. Oh yeah, you'd be gone, long gone. No onions involved. All right. Uh, let us start with Stacy's. Thing. You want to talk about your range? Because you did actually, I, I'm going to give you a plug because you did actually do a good article about your brand new range, which you talked about a couple of weeks ago on the show. Actually, maybe it was last week was your last pick week. of the week. It's last your week. smart range. <laughs> I move quickly. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I'm really jealous because I really want an induction uh, cooktop. So Ooh, it is so uh, good. But this is actually yeah, about the pan you use with your new range. Yeah. So today's thing of the week. She can't is... lift it because she's got a dead arm. I, I, I'm 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 only using my left hand, and it's a heavy pot. Oh, that is the big oh, one. That. I have the whole You're set. You're strong, yeah. Stacy. Look at that. Woo. All right. Bicep curls. It's, it's lighter without the lid. I got to tell you. 
The lid is, well, it's just a heavy, so it's just a it's stainless pot. It's a nice pot. pan. It's a good pan. It looks like Heston, a pot. Heston actually yeah. makes really good, just regular pans, but these are and the new Heston Qs. this is what we Qs. pay attention to. Yeah. Oh, I can't, I might not be able to hold it in an unscrewed. So <laughs> this guy right here is where the battery goes. Yes, my a pan battery? has a battery. In your pan? Yep. What? What? <laughs> So this pan connects to my phone and my range via Bluetooth. And what it does is on its, well, on its own, it doesn't do anything. But on the proper induction cooktop, what it will do is it measures the, it talks to the range, the cooktop, and it has sensors in the pan that measure the temperature that the pan has reached. So what you can do is you can tell it, Either A, I want to maintain a 240 degree pan for clarifying butter, um, and it will do that for you. Or you can alternatively say, I want to cook chicken, and it there are pre-programmed recipes that it will just cook the chicken for you. So we have made, Jeff, this is for you, cacio e pepe. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Their recipe was a little rich for my blood, but it turned out perfectly in... We did have some snafus, so the pan only connects to one account, which I think is a problem because in my family, we all cook. Right. So we need to connect it to our iPad and we need to connect the range to our iPad. So if you don't have like a dedicated home computer, it's kind of an issue. Um, so that's that's thing one that we learned. Um, but my husband freaking loves it. He loves it because he is like the most, I cook by throwing stuff in and smell. He cooks by following the recipe exactly. And engineer. Sometimes his <laughs> yeah, sometimes his recipes don't turn out always so great simply just because, you know, he's it's like they only said to cook it for 10 minutes. I'm like, but mm -hmm. it clearly isn't done. And he's like, but it said 10 minutes. <laughs> so this is helpful for him. Stubborn engineer. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I'm oh like, the I'm computer like, told it. me it's done. That's fine. I'll take it off. So Stacy, I don't understand one thing. The, the pot one? is jeez. No, I there's a lot going on here. That wasn't a that wasn't like a you're stupid. That was a like there is a lot happening in this situation. Oh my. Oh my. I no, I'm no, hurt, sorry. That was Stacey. not meant to be an assault I'm on hurt. you. No. So this time I I you have probably gone through it, but I but I but I but hey, I'm on Twitter the whole time. So um uh, so why would why would the pan need to be smart? Isn't just the stove all you need to be smart? No, pan needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you go ahead, Leo. <laughs> no, you want the the pan knows how hot it is. The stove doesn't know how hot. Yeah, it is. So does the stove. The no, stove, the stove is like an extra insurance policy, but every pan is a little bit different, right? So yep. you're dealing with both the pan, the environment, the, the food that's in it. So mm -hmm. like and the pan when I stick, has when to I'm, be connected to the stove, right? You have a, a pan yes. compatible stove for this. That's the key is you have to yes. have a stove that's smart enough. Heston, the Heston Q's originally came with a smart single burner cooktop. Right, right. And, right. That, and you can still buy that. It. Yeah, yeah. I have that. Um, so yeah. like, I'm not done with, cool I'm not thing, with questions yet. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so tell me the question. Well, here, let me answer. So this is a good use case. When you're heating oil to fry anything, let's say chicken, mm -hmm. you've got your oil at a set temperature, but when you add the chicken, it's going to lower the temperature of the oil right. a little bit. And the pan can tell that and have the oven compensate. So that's why you- That's need cool. Okay. That's cool. Go, The Jeff. oven or the cooktop? I'm sorry, the cooktop. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes, now, see, now you, you, you threw that in to test me. I know, I know what you were doing. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> So, You're not on Twitter. You pass. So what <laughs> sensors are in the pan? What is it measuring? Just temperature alone or temperature. anything else? I believe it's just temperature. Okay. But don't, I, that's that's all that I have seen it measuring. But if someone else knows, like I And then last know. question, which is a lie. It'll be one more. So how do you, d d is there a way to check its progress, right? Because your microwave tells you something on the screen on it. Your stove, does your stove have a screen that tells you the chicken is almost done or does your, does your iPad do that? Or how do you know your microwave what's happening? It's done do now. That, sir. Your microwave just tells you how much time is left that you set. Well, it's that some information. mean it's done. It's something. Well, uh, if you want to do that, okay. just, just on. turn on your stopwatch when you throw something but when in the, the but, 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 that's all but the, the microwave, microwave tells me when it's done. 
How does this show how much time is remaining? Tell me when it's done. done. (laughs) Well, it's finished. I all I did was what you told me to do, and uh, you're in control now. The pan and the stove have taken over from you. You're now redundant. I'm so sorry, Mr. Laporte. I'm (laughs) sorry. Sorry, Miss Stacy. <laughs> How there's do you know app. when the chicken's so there's done? A, there's, a, there's a Heston Q app, and it will. Uh huh. Okay, that's why it was a simple question. And yeah, no, geez. I know. I, it simple was question. just really killing you, man. I was just gonna let it happen. I'm like, I'll just answer later. The app was one. Okay, thank you, Stacy. <laughs> Are you all done now? Okay. Oh wait, I should tell you. So this pan. Sorry. One more thing. This pan is, I think, two ninety nine. I got it on sale for two fifty five. This is a chef's pan. There are five different pan options you can choose based on the sorts of things you want to cook. Um, it's not a nonstick chef's pan, which I'm feeling kind of sad about. But what? The- I don't think they have any. Uh, as I remember, they have one nonstick fry pan now. Do they? It's an eleven okay. inch fry pan that's nonstick. That's our next purchase. <laughs> Yeah, I have those Heston Qs, and I used them a few times, and then I just thought, I know how to cook. <laughs> I, I, I am not as excited me. about this as my husband is. Yeah, really he likes excited. to be told what to do, probably. It's like the June oven. He loves that thing. I mean, I love it, too. But yeah. Like, he's, it's, Lisa it's came same. around on the June. Be, she doesn't like it that you have to tap like three times to cook something. Yeah, but it does such a good job on the Brussels sprouts. She kind of came around on the, on the June. Mm-hmm. Does it kill them beyond a shadow of recognition? No, it crisps. The only way to cook them? No, yes. Oh, it's so perfect. She does thing. not. She grew up with boiled Brussels sprouts and, and told oh. me I will never eat a Brussels sprout. Oh. And then once she, we tried this nice roasting thing and they're crispy and they're delicious, she said, oh, I love She makes it all the time. Which is too bad because it really stinks up the house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's that really cruciferous. It's crucifery writ large. Uh, Jeff, do you have a number of the week? Well, no, I kind of gave it before, but I'll do another one. I'm going to continue a rant from last week. Yes. Even Wordle. I hate Wordle. Oh, Driving I'm really nuts. enjoying it. Why don't you play it? Then oh, you wouldn't it, hate it. Because it spams everybody. No, I'm not doing that. You're not going to pull me into your cult. No. <laughs> Is this Primely? So, Tell me it's Primely. No. No. So a bot came along to say... <laughs> oh, wor- yeah, um, Wordle at Wordle Nader. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to terminate Guess Wordle. What said the bot... People don't care about your mediocre linguistic ex- escapades. To teach you a lesson, tomorrow's word is. Ooh, and Twitter killed the bot, not all the damn spam. No, they should because that's Twitter, a cheating. Twitter, you got that completely And wrong. by the way, how did it know what the word for tomorrow was? That's what everybody... Because an algorithm can do it. No. Oh. It found the list, probably. Okay. Well, didn't... Kim Zetter um, said that you could just, because it's written in JavaScript, you can just... just see all- it. You can show the no. Yeah, you can uh, cheat, but why would you do that? You're only cheating yourself. Because it's a dumb game that spams everybody. That's why you would. <laughs> it's look, games don't spam. Players spam. People. People. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The game yeah, is not spamming nobody. You got to talk to the people on your Twitter stream who keep spamming their Wordle. Mm-hmm. I do, and they You've talk back to me, which Wordle I don't score. like. You've never seen my Wordle score. John. John's never tweeted his Wordle score. I've not never tweeted good, my Wordle score. Nor have not I. Very good, yeah, I. I got yesterday's in two. Ooh. Whoa. That's worthy there. of a you tweet. You just did it, John. You just did it anyway. That was a live spam, <laughs> Wordle spam. <laughs> Yeah, but I got it in two. That's pretty impressive. But you know what? Yeah, I have that's to think, pretty nice. When you get it in two, that's just luck. Let's be honest. What's your first word, John? What's the word you start well, with? Do you have a regular yeah, word you start was, with? Um, uh, from Twit. Uh, what, did, what did Ashley Esketha say? Uh, uh, audio. Good, audio. Audio. Is I always use word, audio. He uses a lot of vowels. And the word yesterday was sugar. So yes, I got I the remember. A and the U, and the U is in the right place. Oh. So I couldn't put the A anywhere else. I put the A where it goes, and yeah. sugar it was the obvious I word. got sugar, but it took me four. Oh, what did I start? What did I start What's with? What's your start? <laughs> what word do you start with, Stacey? What's oh, the first Lord. word you use? Do so you, know, do you I don't have one? play Wordle. Oh. Yay, Stacey. I, know, I knew I liked you. I just, I, I don't. If you're a member of Club Twit, no. you may be happy to know that there is a Wordle group. In our club twit, <laughs> where you can post your Wordle scores. And what have you done? <laughs> well, that's okay. You did know what? Not, post wait, them wait. there. Pro did Fine. not put that there. That's Mm-mm. that's good. By post popular demand. I'm happy with that. Yeah. 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 
It's actually so, kind of fun. Look did at y'all see shades. Primal? They're so cool. What's Primal? Oh, okay. Google Primal. P R I M E L. Oh God! Shut up, Google. It's Prime um, Numbers. It's, it's Prime stop. Numbers. Okay, here we go. Yes, Primal. Yes. So you have to what? Come up with a prime number. Yep. Every That's guess exactly has to be prime. Is. Every guess has to be prime, and you have to find a prime. That's number. hard. This is. Oh yeah, no, it's for like the hard. But you know what? Our audience, I can guess see the prime in six tries. <gasps> yep. You can't do that. You won't see that tweeted. But I could write a program <laughs> to do it. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah. Oh, look at you. Well, some some people like have generated. You could use a list of prime numbers. I I just thought you know. It feels very engineering, Matthew. Oh, I can see yeah. next week's show. Leo is going to be showing us the code he does. I am. I'm going to do a primal solve. Do it. That's easy. <laughs> do it. Trivial. <laughs> Trivial. Just That's generate your assignment a, for next just, week. You so. could probably very easily generate the entire set of five-digit prime numbers. Oh, yeah. And, and the solver yeah. would be a lot easier than yeah, trying to solve Yeah, solver would be doing it in your head is hard. Yeah, I'm going to... I'll just... Know, a lot more words than there are five-digit <laughs> prime numbers. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're looking for it, y'all, it's prime E L. So prime L. Yeah, like not prime. Prime numbers. It's at convergent Ow. converged dot yt slash primal. Yeah, primal <laughs> solver. That'd be fun. Uh thank you, uh, Jeff, for your whatever the hell that was. And a rant. It's a rant. <laughs> <laughs> it's five. The number was five for five letters. Five. Because of Wordle. And troll is a five-letter word. That's what yes. everybody who sends me this, yes. this Wordle crap is doing to me. You're yes. a troll. I like, I like Wordle. It's fun. <laughs> I will I will do it first thing in the morning just to get my brain started. I think it's a good way to start. Uh, Ant Pruitt, what's your pick <laughs> of the week this week? My pick of the week is a podcast I was a guest on. It's called Because We Make, hosted by a friend of mine that I've known for quite a while now. Um. His name is Vincent Ferrari and oh, uh, his yeah. co-host Ethan Carter. And Vincent says to you, Mr. Jarvis, he says hello because he, he hello, joked Vincent. about checking uh, checking in on you with some funny Twitter conversations of, of your, if you will. But he says to tell you hello. Um, but yeah, I was a guest on that and we just talked about um, some of the stuff I do here at Twit and my show and just you know, a maker. content creator stuff. Yeah, I love their show because it's 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 yes it's geared towards makers i'm not a maker i couldn't tell you the first thing about a i don't know bandsaw and butt joints and I, none of that but i still listen to it it's just good conversations that they have every week so that's so if you, we if you want more com. bandsaws and butt joints because we make.com <laughs> that's the one the fact that you even know the word butt joint you're way ahead of me I heard him mention it on that show. And I'm like, what is he talking about? Like, what? Joints and... <laughs> huh? Huh? Yeah. Tap and die. I don't know any of that stuff. Tap but and die, baby. Tap and that. die. And here's the picture. Here's you put this up of the reporter yes. getting the poor predator. She's we're talking a, about the news folks that, uh, earlier today and yeah, the dedication. They're, pr they're producers, they're editors, uh, and they're reporters all at the same time. So she sets up her camera. She turns on her lights. She gets the microphone. She goes on the other side of the camera. Camera's recording. Or is she live? I guess it's just it was on water, live. Yeah, it was live. It was, it was water being break in cold temperatures. So she's out. Poor poor woman at WSAZ, Channel 3 in Dunbar, West Virginia. She's out there. It's her last week. She's about to move up to a bigger station. About time. And there's a car. Just runs right into her. And she runs right into her camera. I shouldn't laugh. That's horrible. I just got hit by a car, but I'm okay, Tim. The camera's on its side. We're all good. And, of course, being local news, they stay right with the shot. We got hit yep. by a car in college, too, just like that. Wow. I so it's not her first time. That's okay. what's funny. She's I'm, been hit yeah. more than once. <laughs> This poor woman. Isn't she is this so awful? And she, then she has to set this up again. She is well, so wait, glad. Wait what she says to the driver. Sure okay. You are so sweet and you are okay. It is all good. You know. Isn't that I, nice of her? She <laughs> forgives the driver immediately because she's standing in the road. But I, that was a dumb show tomorrow, tomorrow morning when she wakes off. up. Yeah, she's going to know. Yeah. Oh, gosh. It's... Uh, yeah, I hope she gets a better yeah, job. So there you see she's moving the camera. I hope she gets a better job. <laughs> She did already. Yeah. She, uh, she yeah. got tons of attention. Well, yeah. but this is, but this is, I mean, 
one of the things I thought was interesting about this story is this is so common now. And they were talking about like some female reporter didn't want to go out at like 11 o'clock to report on a rape in that area. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you shouldn't Mm -hmm. have to do that. This is, Um, this is notorious. You know, you get a, you get a hurricane and who has to stand out there in the hurricane? (laughs) The Mm -hmm. weather guy from Channel 4. And and location shots are worthless. Yeah, we've talked about that. There's no reporting there. It drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. Nothing there. It's just good pictures. That's all. Well, it's a visual medium. One last plug for the hard head. Yep. I just wanted to uh, give him a shout out and say good luck. Uh, This past weekend was supposed to be opening weekend for track and field indoor season for him. Um, and he sent me a picture. Actually, he sent the family a group of pictures. And when I saw it, it just made me cry. He's running for the University of the Pacific. Like, God, dang, man, yeah. that's my boy. Great school. Um, but yeah, I yeah, just want to wish him well and say, hey, keep kicking ass, man. UOP up there in Weed, California. <laughs> not no, weed. they're not in Weed. <laughs> okay, they're in Oregon. Okay, they're in Forest Grove, Oregon. Why man. did but I? Yes, didn't you go to because weed we stopped? For some, it. Yeah, oh, you we stopped, stopped on the weed. way. Okay, okay. Because <laughs> that that town fascinated us. <laughs> yes, as it should. Thank you, uh, Aunt Pruitt. Uh, Twit.tv slash hands on photography slash hop for his latest. What are you What are you covering this week on hop? This week, I have a special guest, the one and only Mr. Scott Bourne. <gasps> My buddy folks, from Mac from Break back Weekly. Back in the day. Back in the yeah, day. I know Scott Bourne. What's he doing? Well, you know, he's an amazing bird photographer, but he's pivoting into some other things now. And uh, it's, um, I'll just say, grab your iPhones and get ready. Okay. How fun. Scott Bourne this Fish. week. Hey, Aunt. Cats. Do we have a book? Yes, we do. It's the uh, uh, unauthorized bread. That's the winning vote. Oh, great. Cory okay. Doctorow's unauthorized bread will be the book of the month for Stacy's book club. When is the event? Uh, we'll figure that out tomorrow. Don't Friday. know yet. Okay. <laughs> Stay tuned. We're just like leading you on, the, but now you have it. Now that we know it's a novella. Today. So whether it's Wordle yeah. or Stacy's book club, there's plenty of reasons to join Club Twit. Best of all, your community manager, Mr. Ant Pruitt. Club Twit is seven bucks a month, as I mentioned, but uh, you get ad-free versions of all the show. You get all the fun. You get the Twit Plus mm-hmm. feed. Twit.tv slash Club Twit. Thank you for giving me a chance to plug it. Mm-hmm. Um, and thank you, Ant, for being here. Jeff Jarvis is the director, ladies and gentlemen, of the Townite Center for Entrepreneurial Journalism at the Craig Newmark Graduate School of Journalism. At the City University Ooh. of New York. Hello. Soon to be a mini musical coming to a stage near you. Yeah, we don't need it. We got it. We got it. Outstanding. <laughs> and uh, thanks, of course, to Stacy Higginbotham. Stacy on IOT.com is her website. Her podcast, the IOT Podcast with Kevin Tofel. Sign up for the newsletter. It's free. Sign up for events. They're free, too. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you all for being here. We do Twig every Wednesday, 1.30, I'm sorry, 2 o'clock Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2200 <laughs> UTC. Um, and you can watch us do it live if you want at live.twit.tv. If you're watching live, chat live at irc.twit.tv or in the uh, Discord. There's live chat there for every show as well. You can also get on-demand shows after the fact at the website, twit.tv slash twig. Or on YouTube, there's a dedicated channel, or in your favorite podcast player. In fact, if your podcast player supports reviews, please give us a five-star review so we can share the word. Tell the world, tell the people about Twig. I'll see you on our Twit community forums, twit.community, on our Mastodon instance, twit.social. I'll see you in Discord, and I'll see you next week. We all will on This Week in Google. Bye-bye. Don't miss All About Android every week. We talk about the latest news, hardware, apps, and now all the developer goodness happening in the Android ecosystem. I'm Jason Howell, also joined by Ron Richards, Florence Ion, and our newest co-host on the panel, Wen Tu Dao, who brings her developer chops. Really great stuff. We also invite people from all over the Android ecosystem to talk about this mobile platform we love so much. Join us every Tuesday, All About Android, on twit.tv. Thank you.